Hey, hey, Celeste and hey. everybody. I mean, the question on everybody's mind, how you feeling? That's the big thing. Yeah, um, you know, we're not out of the woods yet. I still have today and tomorrow off of work. Um, but I have the antiviral medicine that I started taking. Uh, so hopefully that'll start kicking in. And um, I'm much better than I was before. I'm like cogent. I just like can... Uh, I just don't want to overexert myself like physically or anything like that. Um, because right. I still have some of the fatigue going on and I just generally feel yucky. Like there's a yucky taste in my mouth all the time. But you know, uh, other than that, you know, we're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It's been when did, when did you first have symptoms? Because it, it feels like a while ago. Friday. And then it's I tested positive on Saturday. So, damn. It's been rough. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, it's a good reminder for everybody that there's still a, a massive worldwide virus uh, hitting people mm -hmm. hard. Lots and lots of people I, I'm friends with have been getting sick over this last month. So there, there's definitely some more of it going around heavy right now. Yeah, it's uh, also, fun fact, my first time getting it. I managed fucking three and a half years without doing it i was starting to think i was just built different but we got we got it eventually <laughs> i mean three and a half years is pretty damn great yeah i'm pretty proud of that streak honestly <laughs> <laughs> to my knowledge uh, is the caveat because you know uh touche like that touché. but yeah i uh, i had a friend of mine that got really sick like the middle of february of 2020 and he really thinks it was COVID. he has no idea obviously but He's fairly confident that he got it like a month early. I felt pretty confident that I had it a month ago, but I tested like three times and it didn't show up. And then I did test this time. So oh, weird. Uh, if there's, I think there's like some kind of resistance for a while after you get it. I'm not sure, but um, I don't think I had it then. I guess if I got yeah, it, I don't know that it would wait a month right now. You know, um, yeah, I don't Amazing. know. But it uh, sucks, saying hello so, uh, to... oh, don't get it, <laughs> people. <laughs> saying hello to some friends. Josephine's here tonight. Uh, watch Night of the Hunter for the first time. Jealous. Wow. How was that, Josephine? It's my uh, second favorite film of all time, kind of. Amazing. It's in there. <laughs> Dustin says, good evening, all Celeste. Hope you're starting to feel better. Ryan, that incinerator Hi, live stream last night was awesome. Glad you liked it. Uh, Stan is here, Paul, Daniel, Sibner, Terry, hello, my friend, uh, Silent Mandible, Ronnie, uh, here's somebody from your channel. Hi, Ronnie. Hey, what's up? Uh, Silent Mandible got around to watching Three Days of the Condor. That's a good one. John DeMars goes here to live, uh, live tonight. What's going on? Wave is here live. Jake is here live. Everybody's here. This is amazing. Uh, Tony yeah. from Australia from uh, the Imprint Cast says, "Hope you're feeling better, Celeste." Thank you. The crew, the crew rolled up today. <laughs> uh, Josephine wants to know if you drink tea. Yeah, I do. I like tea. I'm not like super into it like some people. Like I just get like garbage store brand black tea or whatever a lot of the time. But I'll yeah. get some nicer stuff sometimes. Usually when it's gifted to me. But you know, Dude McMahon is excited for our topic tonight. Uh, Stan says you're not allowed to do any heavy lifting, so watch out. I'll put the weights down. <laughs> you're gonna have to carry the stream by yourself tonight. Uh, Dead Sea Lock says, So, can we do a, a nine hour stream and break the record? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, Carrie Mulligan tonight, let's do a live read of the Larry Bishop Michael Madsen scene from Gilded Volume 2. <laughs> Shout out Carrie Mulligan, there's a pretty extensive video on my channel just going through a package that they sent me. Uh, because they're the best, so shout out. Yeah, Gary Mulligan seems pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Stan Geezy still hasn't gotten COVID. Shout out, Stan. You, you're, you're, you're carrying the torch now. <laughs> I lost it. Wave says, I lost taste of food for six weeks after I got it last year. Scared me. Did you have any weird taste things in the last week? Um. So I actually was born without a sense of smell, so nothing on that front. But, um, well, yeah, that is... I know. Yeah. But uh, in terms of taste, I can still taste things, but it's all filtered through this kind of nasty, sick taste. Uh, yeah. So I actually bought flavor water packets for the first time in my life just so I can drink water. Um, so my uh, my sister had that weird um, 
I don't know what you call it, byproduct of some of the strands of COVID where she tasted like almost like sewage when she ate anything for mm -hmm. months after getting COVID. Ugh. Yeah, it just uh, tastes yucky. I don't know. Craig from Deaf Crocodiles. Here, what's going on, Craig? Nice. Very the tick. Work, by the way. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Josephine says Night of the Hunter is a masterpiece. It of is. Of course it is. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Celeste has a great t-shirt on tonight, says Anthony. Sure do. Shout out, Anthony, the the other Vile Valo stan in the community <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, so tonight, uh, oh man, there's still some more video stores here too. I had not scrolled all the way down. Tom in Minnesota's here. Uh, got some favorite soundtracks. Anything John Carpenter, Suspiria, Purple Rain, Big Chill. Nice. Those are some good picks. Uh, Craig's been under house arrest oh, with COVID rip. for the last two weeks. Dang. Well, I was in good company, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to get to soundtracks tonight. Um, but the big thing, why? I mean, before we get there, why soundtracks? What, what do you? What is something that makes soundtracks special for you? Oh, I'm just really into music. And um, uh, that was my big first, well, still is, passion um, outside of uh, movies. Um, but music has always kind of been my number one thing. Um, lately that question is harder to answer since I've like kind of turned the movie thing into like a whole thing. But, right. uh, if I had to pick one for the rest of my life, I think it would still be music. Um, I don't know. It just, it's, it's such a cliche to say this, but it's like, it's something like water or like food or something. Like I don't, I don't think I could function as a right. person or as I am without it, you know? Um, I mean, obviously I can literally, but like. It'd be miserable, you know? <laughs> right. And even um, then, you'd probably start humming to yourself or something. Yeah, I know. It just I literally couldn't do it. Uh, you know, I always have band t-shirts on when we do this or when I make videos. It's just like, it's a huge thing for me. And, um, you know, I was struggling to come up with a topic for this one. And I was like, I don't know that I've seen you do soundtracks. And um, I think that that could be a fun lens to look at things. Because um, I like the way that music, especially in the kind of diegetic or needle drop type soundtrack can interact with a film you know you kind of yeah. get a glimpse into the the taste of the director maybe but also the get a feel for the vibe of the characters or of the setting or you know there's a lot that you can glean from the uh song choices in a film so yeah, we've uh, we've talked about scores on here before, and I, I love a good score, love a good soundtrack. Uh, one of the things mm -hmm. that is special to me is, you know, I, I've been huge into music just like you. And when I know and love a song deeply and have listened to it probably thousands of times, and then it comes out in some film or I see it for mm -hmm. the first time in some film, and that moment is etched with that song forever in my brain. Mm -hmm. I love that sort of rewiring that I do. So now instead of, you know, all these years of memories of a certain song, it's immediately I'll go back to that scene in Pulp Fiction or that scene in mm -hmm. something where it's just etched in there perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Love those needle drops. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to share tonight, but also I, I feel like it's been kind of an incredible week. I know you've been sick, but like some of the biggest news in physical media in years or big the stuff last week to talk about today <laughs> that i'm excited about so yeah uh while you've been sick any any pickups that you have nearby you want to highlight uh not nearby but i did um so i work in transportation logistics oh by the way i just got a call from my boss today that i was approved to start working from home permanently again as of nice so That's i'm amazing. off tomorrow yeah i'm off tomorrow and then i'm working from home again that's good news for me yeah. for my mental health and my time management but it's good news for everyone watching ostensibly if you like my videos because i'll have more time because it's really been tough to put work into the channel yeah. with like that commute and everything and all the ways that that drains me um but hopefully you know my boss isn't watching or whatever but like it, it, i'll have more time <laughs> to dedicate to it is all i'll say so uh, i think we can get back into the swing of things um yeah, I'm really excited about that. But speaking of my work, I work in transportation logistics. And one of the perks is that I have a hard time describing it to people. But like, essentially, there's a store that we can go to once a week that has like damaged product. Mm. I don't know where it comes from. But like, you know, 
it's it's a transportation company um uh, our partner company like actually has the the um the assets like the trucks and stuff um so i guess they get pallets of product that's been damaged or whatever and so they have a little rack of dvds and blu-rays and the blu-rays are only four dollars and they had the um Alfred Hitchcock Classics Collection Volume 2, the 4K set. So I got that for $4. So I was pretty excited about that. Dang, what a score. <laughs> yeah. They also had some out-of-print Cohen Media stuff, and um, you can find some good stuff there. So nice. I was excited about that. That is exciting. Uh, nothing crazy for me. I, I mean, I guess I got... Vinegar Syndrome seems to be doing weird shipping this month. Like, some people are getting... Yeah just mm -hmm. vs stuff and then just the mail you seen stuff and then just partner label stuff so I, I got my uh subscriber package in with only i guess we got three titles i'm really excited to check this one out so you don't get any of the partner label stuff nope it's still it's not, not supposed to get here till next week weird i got Can mine you... all at once in the shipping notification i haven't gotten it physically on hand but i got the email the other day and it said everything was there but yeah, I mine was only the subscriber stuff and then the huh. uh, replacement booklet for Showgirls. Okay. And then uh, I don't think we saw the inner art. So just in case somebody's not seen it yet, this one looks incredible. And they did really good with the the design on the packaging this month. I feel like even the uh, Amazon uh, Jail One and Two. I feel like this is way better than it has been for the last couple of months. It looks nice. Um. I've been excited to see Killer Condom ever since I first heard Dr. Will Dotson talk about it. And I was like, wait, that actually sounds really interesting. Um, yep. And then when it's announced, I was like, really excited. Like, cool. Here we go. Uh, uh, any recent watches while you were sick, maybe? Mm, I rewatched Highlander yesterday. Um, it was something that my dad showed me back in the day when I was younger, and I really didn't like it. And so I was, but I've heard people say that it's really great. Um, and I really wanted to check it out because that um, steelbook that came out of it is really, really good. <laughs> and I was like, but I shouldn't buy I shouldn't buy a movie that I remember distinctly not liking. <laughs> yep. So let me check it out first. And I rented the 4K. 4K looks astonishing, by the way. It looks just amazing. Um, but I loved it. I thought the film was great. Um, it actually made me cry, fun fact. I don't know if I'm just emotional with the illness or whatever, but I thought it was really moving and really, really well done. Uh, but from what I understand, I think that Steelbook is out of print now. So if somebody has an extra one or wants to send it to me, they should do that. Uh, I'll look around next time I'm there because I, I see older ones floating around sometimes when I'm over there. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, Rock Chutzen's here tonight. What's going on, Rock? Um <clears throat> so recent watches for me i watched the first half uh and yes only the first half because it's so dang long can i reach it oh, i can i finally started babylon did you ever watch this yet no i haven't I, I wanted to get through it when i was doing my kind of oscar run but i didn't get around to it the uh i think it just didn't come out in time or something like that i don't know yeah it was kind of a late contender um i don't understand all the hate this got uh i'm only halfway through it but this movie is fascinating so far like this... i think i'm gonna love it i've heard great things about it yeah and and it seems very divisive like half the world loves it half the world hates it i don't understand how anybody hates it it is so frenetic and just incredible so mm -hmm. far yeah i've heard the, the things that i've heard from people who don't like it are like oh it's it's too long and it's way over the top or it's like it's too gross and it's too sexual and i'm like oh well, you're just describing a good time to me yeah so, exactly <laughs> I love it. my mom. Uh, my mom just finally got to move out. I'm, I'm happy for my mom. She got her own place. Uh, right she on. was able to come back and watch uh, the, the start of this with me. And I had never seen it. And so we're watching the first two minutes of it. And the first main scene is an elephant shitting all over somebody. And I was like, it's going to be a good cool. time. Cool. <laughs> uh, uh, someone asked see. if it was the old steel book. I don't know. The, the ones they've been doing with the slipcover on them and everything. Whatever one that uh, is. I think it's the only Highlander steelbook that came out for 4K, at least. Yeah. In the U.S. Mm hmm Man, all kinds it's of people in the chat loved it. Nice. Yeah, lots of love for Babylon. Love that. Um, all right. I think that's all of my recent watches. I watched the same movie six times last weekend, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, 
<laughs> not, not tonight, but later soon. Uh, okay. This is a, an interesting time because we have so much to talk about tonight. So, how many um, announcements? Just, is it a hundred? <laughs> it's nowhere near. It's less than fifty, even. But some of these, right. like legendary. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're going to get started this week with 88 Films. And 88 Films is one of those companies that does not have a regular announcement schedule. So when they announce, it's kind of like an avalanche. Uh, they are re-releasing Jackie Chan's Battle Creek Brawl. This is coming on October 9th in the UK only. And this is getting one of their uh, rigid hardbox releases with the booklet. Um, this is going to have some differences from their original release. Unfortunately, uh, it'll have a brand new remaster. It's going to have some new uh, features. I believe it'll have a new audio commentary. They don't really mark them as new, but I, I think one of these two is not on the first one. I'm real curious because this one has a Kim Newman and Barry Forshaw commentary. I, I would love to hear Kim Newman talk about Jackie Chan. Yeah, I don't have anything to contribute on this one. I'm not I'm not super uh, um, well read well viewed on my Jackie Chan um so that makes sense uh, Brendan yeah. says hey y'all hey. longtime fan of Celeste recent fan of Disconnected thanks for the info and Rex you're welcome Brendan hell yeah uh <laughs> Gary Mulligan, uh talking about the stream from last night I did not watch all six versions of Blade Runner thank goodness <laughs> hmm. what's going on Ash uh Stan does not like Damien Chazelle antipathy wow huh strong words that is a strong word <laughs> uh was that really the next announcement? i guess it was uh another really odd choice scream factory i think this is the fifth or sixth time now they're releasing a 4k steelbook of the blob exclusive to best buy um this is coming yeah. out on october 17th the same day as the slipped 4k but nobody announces this just people noticing that it showed up on best buy Best Buy is not announcing it. Scream Factory doesn't put out, hey, we're releasing a, a steelbook. Do they not want to sell these? This is one of the oddest choices to me. It ever. is strange. That seems like, I don't know, they have a, a pretty solid ecosystem in place to be announcing this sort of thing. Just, just say something. I don't know. Exactly. How do, you, how do you feel about the blob? You didn't seem to react super well. Oh, I just hate this artwork, but we'll leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like these... I guess mm -hmm, I should choose my words carefully because I think I'm shitting on an artist because there are certain <laughs> steelbooks that they put out where I'm like, wow, that's hideous, at least to me. Um, but I don't want to shit on somebody's art. Uh, so I'll pass on that personally. But um, so, I've, let not me seen add on to this. I've seen the gonna, original back in the day. But I'm going to say I'll shit on the art for you. Um, okay. I, I hate this art because this is the climactic scene. Why spoil the entire film on the cover? Uh, I guess I'll defend it a little bit. There's plenty of posters that do that. Um, and they should and you don't necessarily know that that's what's happening until you finished it. Like, come like the Wicker Man poster or like the Planet of the Apes poster, you know. The, the Planet of the Apes one is egregious, though. It's pretty bad, actually. It's really <laughs> bad. <laughs> uh, let's see. Stan says he really loves the blob. Honestly, I really think you should see the blob, Celeste. I think you would love so it. I think so, too. I'll check it out when it comes out, for sure. It's 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 been on the, uh, you know, 6,000 film long watch list for a minute, so... Is that know. it? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I will definitely going. say Shawnee Smith and uh, Kevin Dillon in this are both really amazing looking. Uh, they're very hot. Little 80s people in this. Uh, I, I think you'll love it. Very hot little 80s people. It, they are very 80s in this. You'll understand when you nice. see it. Uh, <laughs> Dead Sea Life says, if you shit on someone's art, it just becomes modern art. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Wave, yes, you should absolutely still watch it, even if i saying that this was the ending uh, spoiled that. <laughs> I mean, uh, presumably, yeah, there's a blob. You know, <laughs> there's a blob, and of course, it's going to go crazy, and it will be a climactic ending. So, yeah, I get that. The the most recent blob, uh, enterprise that I viewed was Beware the Blob ah. on the Criterion Channel, and then I bought the Kino Blu-ray because I actually had a pretty good time with it. So, I it's like that movie. One. <laughs> uh, next one up is <laughs> the Medallion from Jackie Chan. Uh, this is coming from 88 Oof. Films in the UK on October 23rd. Uh, 
I am not really surprised, I guess, but kind of surprised that this is getting the the big 88 films treatment. I don't know many people mm. who enjoyed this movie. <laughs> this is uh, from after his his wonderful time. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I, I To be completely honest, I think the only Jackie Chan films I've seen are the Rush Hour films, and I don't like those. They are really but I know that that's bad. not... But I know that that's not a good judge of his no. uh, golden era at all. So I, I I I act as though I've not seen any of his stuff. <laughs> the Rush Hour films, if if you have not seen the oh, Rush Hour so films rough. in a long time, they don't hold up for <laughs> anything. Um, no, I liked them a lot when I was a kid, and they were on like when I was kind of going through a lot of like the uh, the childhood classics to rewatch them. I watched the first one. I was like, "This is pretty rough," and then the second one gets worse. And then the third one is especially heinous. <laughs> it's just like not great. Yeah. If you want to see him say the N word, though, that, that's probably I would hope the only place you could find that. So maybe <laughs> check that out. The only place so far. So far, yeah, that's true. Uh, Rock Johnson says the VHS cover of the Blob scared me so bad as a kid. It's a good cover. The VHS cover is very good. I would like that on a steelbook. Uh, Sivener is thinking the same thing I am. I always thought growing up that that was Jennifer Love Hewitt in the background of this cover. I might have to pause uh, or mute myself periodically to uh, cough. In such understandable. Things, by the way, just so you know. Completely understandable. Brian says Rush Hour is really hard to watch anymore. Uh huh. Uh. <laughs> well, this cover makes the shout artwork look great. <laughs> it's pretty uh, rough. <laughs> Silent Mandibles says, the first two Rush Hour films still hold a special place in my heart, partially because my grandmother loved them. I, I get the nostalgia, at least. Yeah, I wouldn't begrudge anyone for liking them for those purposes. Um, I just remember thinking they were particularly difficult to get through. <laughs> yeah. What's going on, Joe Jack? Going to the next 88 films, we got Iron Warrior coming. This is coming on October 23rd in the UK. And uh, this will have a bunch of special features that have been created and will include the individual that I just recently released an interview with, Mr. A. Eugenio Ercolani from Italy. This is from 1987. And uh, this will have a booklet with notes by Barry, Barry Forshaw. This will have an audio commentary with Ercolani and Nani Britti. This will have an interview with Ovidio As, uh, Asnidis, which he's also interviewed for uh, Urkelani's book, which I really need to get in. Uh, a couple extra interviews on this. I mean, this this looks like a pretty damn good release, and I don't think I've seen this one. Me neither. <laughs> hey, Del, what's up? Yes, Jennifer Love Hewitt was in the tuxedo. Uh, what's going on, Del? Is that Destro? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Let's see. We've got Miles O'Keefe in that one. Uh, next one, October 23rd in the UK only from 88 Films is Magic Crystal. This is another Cynthia Rothrock joint. And this one is sort of heavily rumored to be coming in the US. I would kind of assume that to be Vinegar Syndrome because of their relationship with Cynthia Rothrock. It's not mm -hmm. a guarantee. Just sort of a warning to everybody. If you are normally going to be getting the Vinegar Syndrome stuff, you might want to hold out on pre-ordering this one because I would assume... If that is true, we'll probably see it here soon. Nice. Uh, dude says, hopefully we'll get another release of the Blade Master and Iron Warrior is the third Ator movie. Nice. This cover I kind like of repulses Stan. I like it. It's hideous. <laughs> it is pretty gaudy. Well, it's just a lot and I can appreciate that. The colors are a choice here at the bottom. Uh-huh. But yeah. Uh, Brian says this movie's a lot of fun. It's a good mix of all things Hong Kong in the 90s. I mean, that sounds amazing. I bet. Uh, next up, more 88 films is The Inspector Wears Shirts. This is coming on December 4th in the UK. And sometimes. Is it shirts or skirts? Oh, it is skirts. <laughs> I was like, I swear that says skirts. <laughs> no, it's the COVID. I read it right. I promise. Um, the. <laughs> This is coming at some point in uh, December from 88 Films as well. They don't know the actual date yet. Uh, for those that have been paying attention recently, this is also called Top Squad. And Top Squad had a media book release that came out last year, I think, or really early this year. 
Um, so yeah, if you didn't pick that one up, you might want this one. Top squad pull up. <laughs> uh, Wave says, "Is kids coming to Vinegar Partner through Umbrella?" I would bet a lot of money that it will not be. They're just doing Australian stuff right now, right? Correct. So I, well, they said at least for the first year, which I believe they're semi close to being done with that first year. But I don't know oh, why yeah. they would release anything else, really. Yeah. Next up, the Blue Gene Monster from 88 Films. This is coming on December 4th in the UK and again sometime in December in the US. This one uh, sounds really odd. It says, after a brave Hong Kong lawman is killed in a shootout, his body is reanimated by a Frankenstein-style bolt of lightning. Provided he gets crank-style regular jolts of electricity, he continues to fight crime as an invulnerable zombie cop. Perennial Cantonese movie tough guy Shing Fu Yan gets a lead of his own in this Hong Kong version of Dead Heat with a supporting cast including Gloria Yip and Pauline Wong. Uh, this will blend gross-out horror, comedy, and action in a unique Hong Kong take on the cinematic Undead. This will be a 2K remaster from the OCN. Uh, it will have an interview with the assistant director, Sam Leong, and then a trailer. And that is it. A lot going on in this cover, too. A lot going on. Dale's happy over all these martial arts movies. It's, it's really overwhelming, um, but it's, you know, a good a time as any to be getting into this stuff as I am. So It is sort of the hot thing right now, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reggie says, not a big fan of Asian cinema. Am I the only one? Probably I mean, not. Probably not, not, but it's just a bit of a strange thing to say, in my opinion. Like, it's kind of like saying I'm not a fan of North American cinema or like yeah. European cinema. Like Asia is literally that, a continent. Yeah. That's such a large group of things that it's almost meaningless. I don't know. It's a bit weird to me, but uh, I mean, for example, I very specifically like Korean dramas quite a bit. So I, I mean, even saying like, I don't like a single country. I mean, that's not, it's not a genre. Okay. I, you don't like martial arts as much. That makes more sense. Much um, more sense. Yeah, I mean, just straight up martial arts films, I think would probably be more of an acquired taste. Um, though martial arts is such an influential genre, it's kind of all over the place in any. I mean, there's so much in action films and comedy films, even from, you know, today. That... Not to mention all of the subgenres that you could take from martial arts. I mean, Wuxia, very specific, you know, Shaw Brothers style. Uh, heroic bloodshed there's all kinds of stuff whoa video store says financial cool. fact time 88 films made a net profit of six hundred and fifty thousand pounds last year is that like public knowledge in the uk or something interesting that's a lot <laughs> it's a lot but also like that well it says net profit uh-huh hmm. interesting so that would be after expenses, right? Yep. So, yeah. Huh. Well, that uh, threw me for a loop for a moment. <laughs> Dead Very Sea Life comment made me laugh. Dead Sea Life. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Bergen County, New Jersey cinema. Yeah, that's just the worst. Not one good <laughs> film out of that one. Is he accounted Is he... for 88? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, video story. Be a fun interview. Yeah, it would. Uh, oh gosh, this following that up. Hey, uh, Best Buy is getting a an exclusive 4K steelbook of Blue Beetle, just like they always do. And uh, in more exciting Me. news, Universal is uh, very quickly after the Blu-ray was released, releasing a 4K of Cocaine Bear, and we're used to this happening because this happens every single week. Yeah, it's honestly to the point where like. I mean, I don't buy new releases anyway, but I especially am not buying new releases if they're Blu-ray. It's like, come on. I don't know. The only time that I would really, really focus on... Oh, I mean for studio stuff. No, and I I agree with you, but if it was only mastered in 2K, they're not going to put out a good 4K. So I'm not going to Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I didn't watch this yet. I've heard not great things. 
Um, it it's directed was... by a woman, which is maybe the only thing that I find interesting about it. But we'll see. <laughs> I mean, Margot Martindale is great in it. She she was truly good. Um, I I think that it was fun. It they had. It's such an odd thing to say about a movie like this. It had too many characters. Mm -hmm. And it they didn't need 17 different storylines. I mean, lines. anything in a movie called Cocaine Bear is probably too many characters. So <laughs> The bear was pretty great, though. All right. Did you see this one? Uh, no. October 5th in Germany, Turbine is releasing a 4K steelbook of the Black Phone. And I got to admit, this is a Our pretty is steelbook. Sick. It's sick. Um, I haven't seen this one yet, but I am interested in it. Uh, I know that they're they're doing another one of those numbers over here, um, putting out the 4K. Uh, yeah. So still haven't seen it, so I'll have an opportunity to watch it that way. So that's cool. I think it was good, not great. Yeah, I heard that. You talked about it last week, right? So I heard. Yeah, you talk I think about so. It on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Deaf Crocodile just a moment ago said we're doing something wrong and then says, show me that $817,000 net profit, please. Hell, I'd take a tenth of that. <laughs> well, I purchased the Pied Piper this month, so you'll get there eventually, right? Only in 314 on the million of those to go. Uh, all right. We got that famed number one in the Kino Cult line revealed this week. We talked about this last Thursday. <laughs> Uh, and then Kino came out and surprised everybody by releasing Lorna the Exorcist from Jess Franco on Blu-ray. This will come with a new commentary by Tim Lucas. And uh, for those of you that may have uh, checked out the previous release, this was done by Mondo Macabro on DVD. And I'm kind of surprised Kino was putting this out on blue and Mondo Macabro did. I have a lot of feelings about this artwork. It is very classic artwork. What are your feelings? I'd love to hear them explain. It's very it's, well. It's it's very bold. It's a lot, you know. Like it's kind of gross, but it's also it really hot. But it's like a <laughs> lot, you know. Like they kind of went for it on that one. Yeah. Uh, and I love the art style, like this kind of hand drawn sort of thing, and the color palette is really good. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Uh, Carrie Mulligan says even more egregious than the Black Phone and Cocaine Bear just now coming to 4K is when brand new 2023 films like Rat the Becky Sanctuary and Blackberry only getting a DVD release. Yeah, it's fucked uh, up. I, I think the worst of the three that you just named is Blackberry, where there Dude, is actually a Blu-ray right? that exists in Canada and mm. not in the US. Yeah. You're getting the scoops. And culture That's shock in here. Uh, culture shock upcoming schedule lone wolf assault of the party nerds one and two the refrigerator all before the end of the year and then they have a 90s thriller and a 90s horror that have never been released on disc nice That's awesome always uh, love that... hearing that go ahead oh i just always love hearing never before released on disc that's always Same. exciting to... that whore dude stopping in to say hey at work nice uh wave just got pied piper and heroic times in Rogue Times looks incredible. Yeah, I'll be picking that up eventually. Uh, let's see. Kino Cult, I'm intrigued by the series. Very. I'm excited to see what else is coming from them. I think it's probably intelligent of them to separate this kind of stuff into its own line because it does kind of stick out like a sore thumb when you're kind of oh, browsing yeah. all that stuff um, to kind of separate it as its own. And it's like... I don't know. I like having the studio classics together and then having that all together would be nice too. You know, I think it's smart. They know what they're doing over there. Them them boys at Kino. Them, them Kino boys. Yeah. Uh, Thank you all Kino, for the well wishes, by the way. I appreciate it. There's a lot, so I haven't addressed all of them, but I do appreciate it <laughs> from all of you lovely people. Uh, we had found out about this earlier, but now we have all of the glorious details. Kino is releasing the 1970s uh, Columbo series on November 21st. It is coming uh, in, do they say how many discs it is? I think so. 20 discs set. Uh, and there are so many commentaries. Uh, we've got Mark, uh, I'm going to assume his name is Davidziak, something like that. Uh, Scott Skelton, Jim Benson. Uh, David Koenig and Scott Skelton together, Troy Howarth, Nathaniel Thompson, Amanda Reyes, uh, Amanda Reyes and Daniel Budnick, Craig Beam and Bill Malone. Um, there's all kinds of them. There's so much in here. I'm very curious to see what they are going to be charging for this. Yeah, 
um this is my dad's favorite tv show that's really all i know about it though i think a lot of people could say that exact same (laughs) sentence uh, my mom got him the DVD set for his birthday or something a few years ago. And then she told me that he was complaining that he couldn't find it on streaming. And she was like, hey, I, I fucking bought it for you. Smart. <laughs> so maybe I'll buy this for him if it's reasonably priced. I don't know. Um, question for people who know more about this. It just says the 1970s. Is this not a complete series type of deal? It is not, but they are releasing the rest soon. Oh, okay. It's, cool. it, if it was both all together, it would be very expensive. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Because I thought that they had said they were doing all of it, and then I just saw that it was some of it. But that yeah. makes sense. Okay. Uh, Kino knows what they're doing with the cult line. They know those titles will get people talking. That's what Brandon yep. says. True. Yep. 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 Uh, Stan says, I once literally bumped into Peter Falk at a gay pride event. Interesting. It's uh, a good place to run into people. Def Crocodile Craig says uh, Columbo plus Tony Stella art, which is great on this box, by the way. Uh, plus it being released on Blu-ray means uh, Craig is buying it. And then he says, I'm old. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, interesting video store coming in with all the news right now. It says, speaking of scoops, my friend has been commissioned by Arrow Video to create the artwork to a certain 1979 New York-based Walter Hill film. Hmm. Someone more knowledgeable than me could probably figure out what that is right off the bat. That I have no idea. sort of narrows it down. It sure does, doesn't it? Yeah, someone with some sleuthing skills could probably get to the bottom of that pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, bumping into legends at gay pride events. I have such a great story. <laughs> well, you can't just say that. Well, who was it? <laughs> I, I imagine he's typing furiously at the moment. Okay, good. Uh, Next up, some of the biggest news to come out in quite some time. Uh, So Severin Films had their uh, Super Shock pop-up event last Friday night, and they were able to uh, play a bunch of trailers and announce that they had some things coming. They even played three full films and to sort of bring everything together. So we are getting a 4K of Cemetery Man sometime soon. Um, the, the restoration was not complete, so they couldn't play it yet, but they did show a trailer, I believe. Uh, they also played trailers for Closed Circuit, The Spider Labyrinth, The Devil's Exorcist, Count Dracula, and Exorcismo, a brand new Severn documentary on 70s Spanish horror. They also teased releases of Stir from 1980, Challenge of the Tiger, which is going to be part of that Clones of Bruce Lee set, whatever it's going to be. Uh, called, I think it's called The Many Clones of Bruce Lee. Um, there is a lot to unpack here. So, Cemetery Man. Um, supposedly, from what I hear, this was uh, a matter of rights issues with two people that needed to sign off on this, and they were basically fully hating each other and never wanted to work together, and somehow Severin sweet-talked them into getting this done. Nice. That's amazing. Um, yeah. The Blu-ray that exists of this right now is from Shameless, and it is awful. Mm-hmm. It's in 25 FPS. It judders like crazy. It is not a pretty picture. I have seen it. It's pretty bad, it looks, right? It looks like... You know what? Maybe this might contribute to my feelings on the film, but it looks like I was watching a TV pilot or something, and maybe that has something to do with the frame rate. Um, I would imagine so. Yeah, hopefully this tick doesn't get me in too much trouble, considering I've already shared it on this very program even, but I really hate this film a lot. So uh, this will not be for me, but I'm really excited for everyone who loves it. I think Will Dodson said it was his favorite movie. Um, So good for him Uh, and everyone else who seems to love this garbage for some reason. Uh, I've not seen, uh, well, and first of all, I guess I should say this is also called Della Morte Della More, which is what most people know this as. Um, <laughs> I've not seen it in a very long time, and I kind of refused to until we got a better version. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just like mm-hmm. Brian just said, the laser disc has been the best version for many years now. And I, I am eagerly waiting to see this. Uh, one thing I was not eagerly awaiting is everybody's response to this online was extremely excited. But then immediately, oh my gosh, this will be $60. Nobody can buy this. 
I get it. Stuff is expensive. But also, stuff costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. All right. Craig posted a story. My ex and I went <laughs> totally as a conjoined weird. twin mummy to the West Hollywood Halloween event one year. We are hobbling down the sidewalk when a man jumps out in front of us exclaiming, Stop right there. You girls look fabulous. I've got to get a picture. That means Tim Curry is the only person who has a picture of that fabulous costume we had. <laughs> well, you should get him. You should, that's your in to talk to him. If you're like, you have a picture that I need. <laughs> Maybe he can get you the, the 4K rights to Clue and we can get a definitive release finally. From Deaf Crocodile. Wow. That would be incredible. <laughs> can you imagine? Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, any oh, of these other cost. titles that you know? No, unfortunately not. But the cost thing, I mean, they'll do a standard edition eventually, right? Probably. So I hope I mean, so. I mean, this should be good news for those people too, because like it's just one step closer to that right. cost. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, the only thing I will say is we still haven't got a uh, standard of four flies on gray velvet. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know if you've seen this recently. Uh, Severin is posting convention photos of where they're set up selling stuff. And they're like, mm -hmm. look at the table that you can come find stuff and, and buy from us. The whole picture is great. And then there's a single title on the table that is blurred out. And it's very obviously Four Flies on Grey Velvet. <laughs> Why is that a secret? I'm so confused. I thought they said explicitly they weren't going to do that. And then everybody was like, yeah, except at conventions, obviously. And then maybe that's what's going on there. I don't know. Well, that and you can you can email them and get a copy still. It's not. I don't know. That whole thing is really weird to me. And I don't know what's going on there. Um, it's probably a legality thing where they're they're not technically allowed to retail it, considering they're the ones that signed it. But I I don't know. Uh. Uh, actually, Brian, the they never once came out and said that it was limited to that one sale. They they said in multiple uh, podcasts that they don't know if they're going to do a standard um, because they wanted to give it respect. That That's what David Gregory was saying. Never once said mm. Four Flies was limited. Uh, I remember see. getting that impression, but I don't know. Did Severn manage to find an OCN for Spider Labyrinth? I don't think they reported that yet. Uh, and Spider Labyrinth is one I've wanted to see get a good release for a long time. I believe that was covered over on uh, Unsung Horrors, which is incredible. Um, yeah, I, I believe they did a full episode on that a while ago. And then uh, the other big thing, Count Dracula. This is the Jess Franco joint that got a release from them a long time ago, and they are re-releasing it. So the big deal here is... They were able to find a long-lost uh, OCN for this. Um, nobody has touched it in more than 40 years, and Andrew Furtado was the first one that got to dig into it. So this is going to look dramatically better than anything we've seen on Jess Franco's Count Dracula. Lots of people saying that they said it was only for the sale. I, I swear I remember them saying that too, but um, I don't know. I wasn't paying that much of attention, to be honest. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, if, if you go listen to the podcast, he basically says, I don't know if we're going to do a standard. That was it. I know that they implied it. The only one recently they've, that they've really said that for is the one that they just did for their summer sale. Yeah. Thanks, Cave. Thanks, Caveman. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good comment. <laughs> uh, next up. Um, maybe an even bigger announcement than uh, yeah. Cemetery Man, which happened the next day, which is insane. Kino Lober came out and said, uh, in 2024, they are releasing, as part of the Kino Cult line, 4K releases of Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS, and the next three Ilsa films. Like, Are they all 4K? It wasn't clear to me in the wording. It, it is because it says brand new HDR Dolby Vision Masters. That's crazy. I didn't even know there were four of these. Are the are the sequels like popular enough to necessitate that or to justify that, I guess? They are, yes. Very yeah. much so. I mean, these are these are like Cemetery Man level of releases. Yeah. These are things that people have been waiting for for years. 
Mm-hmm. I will say, I don't think any of the sequels are anywhere near as good as the first one. But, uh, yeah, these are ones people want. I haven't seen these. This whole genre has rubbed me the wrong way, and I haven't taken the plunge yet. But I've been meaning to do it. I've like decided that I should kind of do an essentials checklist of this yeah. Nazi exploitation thing to kind of have a fair read on it and uh, actually know what I'm talking about, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. And I, I guess maybe the biggest story underneath all of this is Kino was able to get this from Lionsgate somehow. Uh, that, oh, is this that a is... Lionsgate? It is a Lionsgate, which is why it was hidden for so long. Um, I was going to say, I bet it wasn't... I, I don't know that Lionsgate wants to be putting these out at Best Buy and shit, you know? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, probably. Uh, this is this is crazy, though. For Kino to be able to announce this, they had to shell out, guaranteed, to get this away from Lionsgate. Mm-hmm. I, I'm still like absolutely shocked that they announced this. The fact that they're doing 4K for all four of them is insane. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big one. I'll be excited to watch these because I've, I've never seen any of them. So, Ilsa Tigris of Siberia has been crazy rare for years. The other three were re released on VHS in the 2000s. Yes. Uh, and a, a lot, I think all four of these have been bootlegged like crazy multiple times, too, because people have been after them for so long. Mm-hmm. Is Ilsa the Kino Cult number one, or have they not, still not announced that? We just went over that. That was the Lorna the Exorcist is number one on the Kino Cult line. Uh, let's see. Caveman says, I first heard of Ilsa from Jason Werner, a.k.a. Body Count Rising. Will this have an English dub track for these? They, Kino, you know how Kino is, probably. Kino does not announce all their details till it's actually coming out, sadly. Uh, Ragnar had them on DVD from Anchor Bay. Uh, next up, the hits just keep coming, because uh, the world seemed to fold in on itself. Uh, Disney announced that they are putting out Loki Season 1 in a 4K steelbook, they've not announced if this will come as a standard 4K or Blu-ray or anything like that, but it is coming out on September 26th. 4K steelbook, uh, two-disc set. This is going to have actual bonus features. It will have HDR10 because Disney never does Dolby Vision. Uh, surprisingly, though, the 4K discs will be 100 gig discs rather than the 50 or 66 that they normally use. Hmm. Um, this will have Dolby Atmos for audio and uh if these sell well they are like actually saying to people as they're they're talking in these press releases if these sell well there will be more next year uh and they basically hinted on their page that uh falcon and winter soldier could be coming as well likely next year and uh digital bits they were able to confirm with the industry sources that all of these three seal books that we're about to look at uh, as well as the recently announced Prey from 20th Century Studios, will all be coming to international markets. We don't know what countries, but they will be coming, uh, just probably not to Australia, sadly. <laughs> uh, and uh, with details on that will be determined, will be announced later, but they are coming. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about the move to pull out of Australia and you were kind of relaying those sales figures, it was it felt pretty bleak. Yeah. Um, and I was honestly like, I, I have no reason to believe that they're ever going to do this. Um, I've, I don't know. I'm pretty blown away that they're doing this. It's, it seems like a pretty big deal. I don't want to overstate it, but it seems like a, like a really, really big deal that they're doing this. Um, so yeah, hopefully this bodes well and this sells well and you know i'm not going to be buying any of it not out of any principle or anything it just doesn't interest me but like you know hopefully the people i know so many people have been wanting these and they can right. finally get them so hopefully it does well right uh before we go into like how big of a deal this is let's talk about all of them so the next one is wandavision the complete series which is one season uh will be coming in a 4k steelbook on november 28th They've not announced any of the special features, but it will have the audio and video of the same uh, specs and all that as the Loki disc. And then they also announced that the Mandalorian season one and the Mandalorian season two will both be getting 4K steelbooks. 
also the artwork on these is like weirdly really really good <laughs> like they're all really beautiful to me i'm like wow that it seems like they actually they didn't just like half-ass it like there's some effort that went into this just it is a terrible time for them to do great art when they are advertising Disney 100 steelbooks in Best Buy right now <laughs> that are just trash. Um, so, yes, how big of a deal is this? Uh, the big thing is that Disney, first of all, has always, always hated home video. They have always been against it. You know, they're the ones that started the vault system. They're the ones that have uh, done this false sense of uh, scarcity so they could drum up either other sales or make their stuff feel more valuable essentially so we'll see uh you know if this actually means anything moving forward this could be them trying to make some money back but at the same time there's no real guarantee that 4k steelbooks are going to make them even like a noticeable amount of money that i mean they run mm -hmm. so many theme parks they make way more in a single day than they're probably going to make from any of these that's what I was kind of getting at. I was like, I don't see a reason for them to do it if they don't care, you know? Um, yeah. So it's bizarre to me that it's happening, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm very confused by it. Uh, I'm wondering if perhaps, uh, you know, the rumors of Disney trying to sell to someone else may have been true and they could use this as valuing some of their assets and say, look, we were able to sell X number of home video releases. If you let us keep the parks, we'll sell you home video rights or something. There's lots mm -hmm. of things that could be happening behind the scenes. And they're just doing Steelbooks right now, right? Which is That's all they've announced. We, we don't know that there's going to be anything else. But Yeah, uh, I, mean, I mean, that tells me that they're catering to like collector people. Um, right. Which I guess putting this out in any capacity is already doing that. But especially doing like the nice editions and stuff, that's yeah less of a casual viewer thing i think and um, that's what disney's so. all about i mean all of their right exactly you know, <laughs> the disney adults sort of thing this is something that they can jump on for real that's true disney adults fucking chomping at the bit for this shit <laughs> uh craig says how about the netflix shows i'll be a grumpy old man till i get daredevil season three on blu-ray i guess yeah you know this is exciting and everything but i i kind of agree that like every other platform to me has more interesting like actual like content to put out right to me personally at least um like there's tons of netflix stuff that i would love to see uh and like hbo and stuff too but yeah you know uh terry says with Iger returning there were suggestions that disney was going to get back into physical media we'll see if this is just their toe or if they will get their feet back properly time will tell i guess uh, for anyone um, hating on Bob Iger, and there's much to hate right now, but he yeah. was the one on the earnings call who fought for physical media to come back. This is true. That's, that's what I was thinking about. Is I he did I remember him saying something pretty explicit about it. Um, <laughs> despite him being a goblin, fucking awful person that should probably be served medium well. Uh, you know, that's good at least. <laughs> Caveman says, "I'm glad they're not doing the silver steelbook cases for these, aren't we all?" Uh, yeah, and then I, it's rough. <laughs> I love Craig's comment here. They're so big revenue from these discs they could find on their couch cushions. Uh, God, I would love to have Midnight Mass on disc. Yeah. Uh, Christianko says if HBO deletes the Irma Vep series before putting it on Blu ray, I'm going to flip a table. I hear that. Well, you know, there's services for that kind of thing. <laughs> that. I won't speak for you, but I would advocate for. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I hope they start putting out Hulu shows too, says Ronnie. Desperately want a Reservation Dogs complete series set. Didn't Reservation Dogs come out? Not the whole I thing. No but I feel like uh, there was at least a season. No, I guess there wasn't. All right. What was I thinking about then? Sivner says those Disney 100 steelbooks are going to be buy one, get nine free on Black Friday. It's going to be a uh, Chinese democracy type situation. <laughs> Except no, hey, there's, there's, there's a reference that like I'm old enough to make. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Continuing on. Uh, Wellgo USA is releasing an Ip Man steelbook. This is from 2008. The odd thing here 
they released this as a 4K oh. steelbook or uh, as a 4K title previously, and they're releasing this just as a Blu-ray steelbook. Neat. I'm so confused. <laughs> Thanks, Christopher. I appreciate that. I feel uh, low energy today. The uh, the the uh, this is the most I've talked in like <laughs> two weeks or something. But hopefully, it's you know we're making it happen. So far, so good. Yeah. Uh, Dell says I'm still not buying Iger's physical media comeback. Pulling it from Australia goes directly against that notion. Unfortunately, Australia is also a very small market that is very remote compared to where things get printed and shipped. So if they're not selling there, I don't think it's quite the same. Yeah, when I referenced that, um, the numbers you were talking about, I was more so when you talked about it on stream, you talked about the U.S. sales numbers, too. And I was like, gee, that's pretty bleak. Uh, yeah. I don't blame them for, like, abandoning ship on this. Uh, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, Greg says they did say on the Severn website the Poor Flies limited edition was Black Friday only last year and a standard might come later. So probably to avoid any false advertisement claims. There they go. I guess that version maybe was the exclusive. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John says Disney parks make about $20 million profit every single day. Thanks, John. That, I mean, that does kind of put it in perspective. Like, how much money are they realistically going to make on all of these steel books? Like what? It's true. A, a fifth of that? Like it's nothing, you know, not even close. <laughs> yeah. Not even like that's moving. very optimistic off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, here's an interesting one. If you were a big fan of kill her goats, that movie that was the, the talk of Facebook a few months ago, uh, with the no productions is going to be doing a Kickstarter that just started yesterday for a film called Fog City, and this is the steelbook uh, that they are doing for it. Uh, yeah. The big thing here, they're, they're really excited to let you know that these are going to be individually numbered via laser etching. Neat. Yeah. The, the Killer Goats really has only stayed in my... Um consciousness as it were just because I, I don't know that i've ever heard every like a film's reception so universally be like that was the worst thing i've ever seen <laughs> it is I, shockingly not good i've not watched it um i did not purchase it um but i'm i'm certainly not going to now uh <laughs> but it was just i was shocked at just the the uh unanimousness of the kind of uh Man, COVID really fucking with my uh, my uh, <laughs> articulation tonight. I don't know. It was it, very it, it was very clear the message that I got in terms of whether or not that was worth my time. It was really sad to see everybody so excited to see Kane Hodder play a new villain, and mm -hmm. then just so depressed that they spent thirty dollars on that steel book. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, midlife says I got burned as did we all on killer goats. <laughs> oh man. Uh, next up second sight films got ahead of the, uh, everybody pre-purchasing from criterion possibly and said, mm -hmm. Hey, you know how they're doing mean streets on 4k. Well, so are we, uh, second sight famously is really great with new extras and packaging. I'm very curious how this is going to stack up to criterion. Mm -hmm. yeah you and uh jeremy were discussing criterion last week and um i think you were both ever like yeah it's kind of hard to argue that they're like still kind of on top these days um i gotta say i used to be like the biggest criterion fucking stan and like uh kind of obsessive about it um and i will still say that in terms of the films that they put out like i don't think it's close like i think that they are and have always been the best like collection of films out there for home video. Yeah. Um, like, I don't think that that's really super negotiable to be honest, but like they have been consistently disappointing me every month on the, and not even the packaging, the packaging is fine. I like their packaging. I like that. They keep it consistent. I don't think it needs to be like fancy bells and whistles. I like that. They don't do limited editions, all this other stuff. No mm -hmm. packaging is fine. 
what I am consistently disappointed by is the what feels like very bare bones special features packages that yep. come out on all the releases. And I'm not even talking about the upgrades. Like if that's going to be the exact same thing and they've set that standard, that's fine. But like, I don't know. And it kind of makes it even sting worse that they have like the best films coming out because like it feels like a wasted opportunity every time now with like these very limited extras. Um, and that's kind of like something they invented. And it's really kind of sad that they're falling behind on it. Um, I don't know. That's just a vibe that I've been getting where like sometimes I'll, I'll see a release and I'm like, yeah, that's stacked. That's sick. But I I don't know. Even the Mean Streets one, I was like, is that it? It's kind of like it was a lot of excerpts, you know, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I just have been consistently looking at the extras package on their new releases and being like, I feel like we could have done better than that. Like, you know, um, I think that one nanny that was just announced had like an interview and that's it. And I was that like, was, was that a Janice contemporary or was that Criterion? No, that was a Criterion October okay. announcement. It was a, um, I forget the name of the director. I think it was a first time director. Um, but I was just like, I said this in my Patreon exclusive video talking about it or whatever, but I was just like, I don't know. If like all these Venner Ascension partner labels can get like hella features and like really good commentaries on these like films nobody's ever heard of, like I feel like why can't Criterion get literally anybody to do a commentary on these things? You know, like so many people would yeah. love to do that. It just kind of feels lazy, like coasting. That's my rant for the day, I guess. <laughs> I will fully say that uh, I think Criterion has had probably their best year of titles in a long time this year uh, mm -hmm. literally every single month i'm mostly excited about what they're putting out mm -hmm. and then i look at the features and i will 100 percent agree with you i think every month there's maybe one title that i'm like oh okay they actually tried on this one but it seems like more often it's about one every two months uh it, it's yeah. getting to be less and less that they're trying and criteria is still like i know they laid off a bunch of people a couple years ago they're not uh -huh. a small company they are still no. the <laughs> largest boutique company yeah um again I, like if if kino can get at least a commentary on all of these like i mean real deep cuts from if the vault, kino can you know? put out <laughs> three editions uh -huh. of night gallery with a commentary on every episode, yeah, you can get just, somebody to talk about a Martin Scorsese film. Yeah, it's really kind of just unfortunate. And I find myself like comparing with Region B releases a lot and always finding that the Region B has more stuff on it. Yep. Yeah, that was one that felt particularly egregious. And I think they agreed and they added the extra film, which was nice at least. Um, but still, it's now it's just kind of like a two pack as opposed right. to more features, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's still, yeah, I don't know. I, I agree with the contemporary stuff. It's especially bad. Um, and not the Janus contemporaries, although that's kind of rough too. Um, well, I, I kind of understand those because those are going to be younger directors. They're not going to have a whole mm -hmm. lot of ex extra stuff. People are not going to be able to talk about their body of work necessarily. Yeah, that, I mean, I'm glad that it exists, even though it is just a one-to-one -one like the film and the interview that's already on the Criterion channel, just put on a right. disc. It feels like that's where their focus is in terms of extra content, because they actually put out a yep. ton of stuff on the Criterion channel. Yep. Um, they've been putting a lot of effort into that. Um, I just kind of wish it was both, you know, um, right. I love the Criterion channel. I think they're doing amazing, amazing work over there. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of sad kind of uh, sad Ad that's all <laughs> adam says the same reason studios usually don't put extras because they don't want just anyone to do them snobbish like that it's either bogdanovich or no one uh, you, you know, know what i think you might be right a little bit I, I i will say though no one's ever come out and said that i think that's a lot of assumptions on our part though uh no one said it but i think that you, when you do see a pattern of like uh, you know we can't just have anybody <laughs> doing a commentary on our release you know maybe but that's every... part of what is informing it Every so often, they do have somebody that will do something on one random release in like March of a year, and so mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. and and again to to back up your point, the the worst part about this is that they 
kind of started this. They did the commentary thing and made it popular. And to drop that now, oh boy, rough. Yeah, and I don't want to sound too bleak. It's not like they got rid of it entirely. It just feels like it is low on the priority list. When to me, when I'm looking at uh, something to buy on Blu-ray, the, the special features are honestly like the number one thing I'm looking for. I would agree know? there. Um, that's my most important thing. Uh, so, Well, and I mean, to get back to what we're talking about, Second Side is going to put stuff on this that Criterion does not have, yeah. guaranteed. Yeah. And not to mention, they use uh, Fidelity Emotion for all of their encoding. Their discs always look better, period. Same with Deaf Crocodile. Deaf Crocodile, not to just suck up because Craig's watching, they use incredible encoding, and they are remarkable at it. Their discs look better because they invest in their discs, and that matters. And I don't know. I, I don't understand why, if you're Criterion, you're not paying just that little bit extra for freaking mean streets on 4k or some mm -hmm. of these titles that people have been wanting for decades in a definitive release and you're finally doing it and you're just like eh, <laughs> yeah. we'll spit out this crappy disc yeah uh, okay to be clear though i do think that they're they're transfers like they always look amazing even on just the blu-rays i think they look i've never been disappointed with the way a criterion blu-ray looks um or sounds, you know? Uh, they're good, but again, they're not the best in the industry. And unfortunately, there's a huge portion of film fans that look at them and say, no matter what happens, they're top-notch. These yeah. Criterion bros are ridiculous. I, I feel like that was that was me a while ago, before I got into Vinegar Syndrome, and then I was like, I can't... You can't deny the level of work that goes into, like... I don't know their films versus criterions and like the level of quality in the actual films is like right or the level of acclaim let's call it that is like i don't know vinegar syndrome puts 10 times the amount of effort into like putting extras on like a nothing film that like nobody liked <laughs> right. and criterion just kind of does the bare minimum on like a fucking solid classic like like bulletproof banger you know it's just like right. <laughs> Anyway, this is a long yeah. rant that we didn't need to have today, but I know. no, I think it's important. <laughs> oh boy, uh, Bill Murray in mm. Scrooge is getting a 4K release on November seventh. Uh, how does your reaction explain how much you like this film? It's okay. An ex of mine really, really liked it, and I we watched it together, and I was like, "Yeah, it's good." And and I wasn't lying; I thought it was good, but I, I think I'm fine with my. Uh, studio blu-ray that i got in a goodwill lot or something you know <laughs> <laughs> i feel like at one time you and i talked about bill murray was that you or was that someone else uh i think it was me and you said you weren't super impressed i've never I, i've never yeah, loved okay. bill murray i don't i don't know i don't get it i don't get it uh the big thing here though um it's paramount so it's either going to be an incredible transfer or look worse than the blu-ray <laughs> Um, but then uh, in their press release, one of the big things that a lot of people missed is that they say, uh, let's see, where is it in here? Uh, featuring hours of never before released special features. That's actually pretty damn cool. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Paul says, my grandpa grandparents watch every version of A Christmas Carol and showed me this very young and I enjoyed it. Still do. Surprised they liked it being very conservative in their film tastes. Loved Scrooge when it hit theaters. Haven't seen it since. I worry a rewatch will kill my fond memories. It's not bad. I just thought it was kind of like. I don't it was know. very overhyped for me. Yeah, that's that too. But I didn't find Bill Murray like being a huge piece of shit to people for like an hour to be particularly entertaining. Um, I don't know. Um... Interesting wave. <laughs> very interesting. Uh, yeah, watch Scrooge <laughs> at the drive-in when I was a kid with the naked gun. Remember liking it, but never saw it again. Uh, yeah, this is an odd thing, too. They're releasing this with a uh, just a 4K and not a Blu-ray, but then Trading Places has a Blu-ray with it. I, I'm very curious how they're doing their, uh, yeah, their choices. Are they, 
I know Warner Brothers lately has been dropping the Blu-ray and the features, which is like horrifying to me. And like, yep, it's just unbelievably lazy and also like. I don't know, like a crime or something that you would just drop that. But like, uh, is Paramount at least carrying over all the features on the 4K disc if they only do the 4K? Much of the time, I don't yes. know if you what, know that. Okay. What they can, yes, they have been. That's good. <laughs> Michael Smith, been waiting for two months for Vinegar Syndrome halfway sale because the Psychic was pre order. It's finally out. They the Psychic? Are you talking about Severin? Not yeah, Vinegar that's a, Syndrome? That's, that's a Severin joint, but you know. Uh, this less view on the film is very Gene Siskel. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Heroic Waffle, what's going on? Uh, Chris Silvestri says, I didn't get Evil Dead Rise because that uh, release was very lazy. And yes, it was. Uh, yes, he was talking about Severn. And uh, Psychic just nice. came in stock literally today. But uh, they are still waiting on one more title there. Nice. Next up, That Trading Places. November 7th, 4K from Paramount. This will have a 4K and a Blu-ray disc. Um, not a whole lot of details on this one yet. Uh, but it's a good movie. Jamie Lee Curtis is great in this. This one is interesting. <laughs> you haven't seen Trading Places? Mm -mm. I guess Just one that. I missed, I guess. Uh, Ronin Flicks uh, quietly put up on their site that they are releasing There's Nothing Out There from 1990. Now, what's odd, this had a Vinegar Syndrome release, and for many people, that is the definitive release. Uh, unfortunately, this says collectible two-disc set will include a new 2K remaster of the film, new never-before-released bonus materials, new limited edition slipcover and mini poster featuring the original poster art. So if you love this film, you may want to keep an eye on Ronin flicks. Cool. I've not seen it or heard of it, so uh, this would be a good opportunity. Uh, I like that um, John says Scrooge was his introduction into horror cinema. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fun. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Sibner says, I could have sworn that came out already. Uh, this one did from Vinegar Syndrome. But I don't know if you were talking about that one. Uh, next up, Terror Vision announced that they are releasing The Head from 2019. This will be shipping in early October. And the important thing here is that this was directed by friend of the channel, Michael Keane, another YouTuber who's working on another film uh, that should be coming out soon. This is the slipcover art on The Head. And I cannot wait to get this in as part of my sub. I'm desperately trying not to make a joke about getting head from TerraVision, so uh, stop me if you uh, catch me starting on that one. You you can go all in, because we have heard it many times. Uh, so this one says, Peter is an easygoing man-child with a handful of mommy issues. His love for his mother is matched only by the welts from her beating him with a cane and the affections of a hot punk rock. After whacking off in an alley post-rejection, Peter hears a voice calling out to him for help, and it's a woman. He goes to help only to discover the sexual odyssey he never knew he needed. Now this horny, youngish man murders people in order to feed his blood-hungry true love a telekinetic mannequin head. I mean, who among us has not been in that situation, you know? <laughs> You're just jerking off in an alley and then, you know, the visions. <laughs> Uh, Craig was asking if the slipcover is just the same art as the wrap for the There's Nothing Out There. Yes. Yes, it is. It's the exact same. Uh, for this one, I've been waiting to share this hilarious story all week. Uh, I took my kids out school shopping for a couple things, and we were walking in Target, and we walked by a little group of three mannequins, and Spencer, my youngest, stopped abruptly and really loudly went, look at those mechanics. And it was the funniest thing. <laughs> I love kids like almost English. It's yeah. Great. <laughs> and I was just looking around. Wait, are there auto, auto body dealers here or something? I like Caveman's comment. I'm not sure if that's a typo or not. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's strip grease dance as opposed to a strip tease dance, but I'm picturing a strip grease dance now. And uh, 
I guess there's a lot of lubricant involved. And tell me more. Yeah. That, that was a, a Grease the Musical joke. Anyways. Ah. Tease from Deaf Crocodile confirmed another amazing artist for our next Kickstarter exclusive slip. Interesting. That's like barely a tease. That's like, yeah, of course you did. I would expect <laughs> that. <laughs> In other words, Craig, Celeste wants more. <laughs> yeah. Come on. So this one, uh, The Head is going to get Making Of, which is a feature-length documentary with cast and crew interviews, an audio commentary by Michael Keane, an audio uh, audio commentary with Casey Keane and Matt Walker. Walker? That was a weird way to say that. Matt Walker. Uh, trailers, VHS B-roll, behind-the-scenes clips, a festival cut, a deleted and extended scenes, and Michael seems to be trying to put a whole bunch of extra stuff on this disc. So there's likely going to be some other stuff on this that we can't even see yet. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> that helps. That helps. Yes, Keen does great extras. I agree. Uh, hey, I put up an interview that I already talked about a little while ago. So uh, my interview this week was with Eugenio Ercolani in Italy, and he tells some wild stories. One of his interviews is about Sam Peckinpah begging for cocaine. And uh, yeah, he reads it right. directly from his book. It was very fun. While we're plugging interviews, I did one with uh, on the They Will They Live by Film podcast that I finally got a chance to listen to, and I thought it went pretty well. So uh, check that out. And it was incredible. It was a oh, really thanks. good conversation. I thought so too. I enjoyed it. Oh, this one's weird. It's very weird. So October seventeenth, <laughs> Lionsgate is supposedly releasing a Twilight fifteenth anniversary collection. Uh, three alternate artwork cards that can be swapped into the front cover of this package, some audio commentaries, blah, blah, so a lot of this other stuff. The rumor is, though, that they're also releasing a 4K set later this year after they release this. Hmm. What is going on? All right, so with the Twilight stuff, your opinions of the films are whatever they may be. Um, but for a while, what I was doing is I was buying, like, lots of blu-rays from good like shop goodwill.com and uh taking the ones that are like decent and um cleaning them up and like actually it's a lot of work actually because those things come in pretty busted and nasty and like i was actually taking the time to clean them up put them up on ebay give them nice listings individually um it was pretty good for a while uh it stopped being at all worth the effort i don't know like just random studio blu-rays you can't get anything for anymore um but let me tell you the number of <laughs> Twilight <laughs> Blu-rays that I had to just sit on because nobody <laughs> wanted any of them. Any of them. Like, it didn't matter which one it was. Those things just sat. It didn't matter if it was a Target exclusive fucking whatever. Like, no. Nobody's interested. So I don't know who is in the market <laughs> for a new Twilight Blu-ray set <laughs> is the... Uh, the Curzon collection. That's what I was getting at with that little aside is like, I don't know who this is for or who is buying this because I couldn't get rid of these things. But, um, you know. Yeah. Stan says, Those whatever happened like, to Taylor whatever, Lautner? You know? I remember liking them, to be honest with you. <laughs> I've, I've been told multiple times I would probably really like the last two. I, I remember seeing the last part one of the last one in the theater because my mom and I would uh, would go and see them together. Um, the, it became kind of a tradition. And I remember seeing that one and being like, that was kind of sick, honestly. Like, low-key, that kind of ripped. Um, I don't know. I've been meaning to uh, give them all a rewatch. Um, I, I might completely change that opinion having rewatched it, but we'll see. And it's sad because I genuinely love both Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson and, and everything I've yeah. seen them in. <laughs> I mean, that's... If anything, it gave us that. It's true. You know? It's true. Uh, Film Masters oh. <laughs> is releasing The Scarlet Letter from 1934. This is coming on November 21st. <clears throat> and we had talked about this previously, I think. Maybe not. Uh, but we did get some release details. So this is going to have a brand new 4K restoration. This is coming from original 35 millimeter archival elements. Uh, there's going to be an original production narrated by John Carradine on this. Full commentary track by Jason A. Nye. Uh, there's an essay in full color in a booklet by Professor Jason A. Nye as well. 
And then uh, Ballyhoo Motion Pictures is doing an interview with author Justin Humphreys and a new interview with the producer Sam Sherman on this as well. So I, th- I think I've seen this kind of and to make that answer make sense. Uh, fairly recently, I don't know, a month or two ago, um, someone I was hooking up with, I was at their place and uh, they are into VHS tapes and they were like, hey, I found this VHS tape of the Scarlet Letter. And it was like the, it was like an old one. I don't know how many times this has been adapted. It could have been Man. a different one from the 30s or 40s or whatever. Um, but they put that on and like it's it's a busted old VHS. There's no subtitles <laughs> and we were doing other things. So like I've kind of seen it, I think, <laughs> is all I have to contribute to that. It is pretty damn cool that they're able to get a new 4K restoration of like yeah. one of our earlier talkies. Mm-hmm. So, this is I cool. I thinking it looked pretty okay. I'll say that, you know. So, Bill Masters. I mean, I, I know that the the whole film was it film detective, detective that they yeah. were first. Uh, everything that they're doing now has it's been really exciting. Just the amount of stuff that they're able to suddenly release, and a couple of their releases have just bonus full films on it. I mean, that that's great. Yeah, it seems almost all of them do, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I'm going to seek this out just literally just to say that I've seen it at the double check to see if it was the same one. Right. Uh, let's see. Need to market Twilight as a drinking game? Take a drink every time Kristen Stewart shakes her head. We don't have enough hospital space for that. <laughs> uh, Kino Lorber is releasing Tokyo Pop, and uh, this is one that I had like almost posted a couple times, but they were moving the date around. This one is finally coming out on December 5th. And this is going to have an audio commentary by the director, uh, Fran Rubel Cousy, and then a a re-release trailer. And that's it. But uh, I've never seen this. And this is supposed to be incredible. This has a new 4k restoration. I'm definitely going to check this one out. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. Looks good though. Uh, Craig says, I did a 4K restoration from the OCN of a 1909 D.W. Griffith film. Never made it to disc yet. Interesting. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, Hey, this is one that Celeste hates. (laughs) Uh, October 23rd. (laughs) Go ahead. No, so I did a little short review of this on my little (laughs) shorts page or whatever. And I was like, this shit sucks. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's not good. And I didn't think that that was particularly controversial. Um, and I didn't get a ton of comments on it. So I didn't, I still didn't think it was. But I looked at my analytics one day and it was like, I had like 16 likes and like 36 dislikes, which <laughs> never, ever happens on my videos. And so I was just like, whoa, I didn't realize that people felt that kind of way about this. I don't know. I thought it was pretty obvious that this is not great, but. Whatever, if you like it, have at it. I also think that this looks hideous, but you know, well, I'm being a hater, I guess. Uh, October twenty third. His face. Awful. Well, let's get a better view of it. Awful. I hate it. It's terrible. Look at it. It's hideous. <laughs> October twenty third. Hannibal is a good movie. Okay. Well, I'm glad. I- I actually like it. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm glad people like it. I thought it was terrible, well, but you I, know, I actually I like everything in this franchise, and I will happily admit, like three of the films are not <laughs> great films. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was watching it right after Manhunter is especially a bad idea if you yes. want to appreciate it. Um, yes. Uh, so this is coming on 4K so in good. the UK on October 23rd. This is going to be a collector's edition steelbook. This will be 1500 individually numbered edition. Uh, you got a 40 page booklet, six lobby cards, a double sided poster, a 4K and Blu ray steelbook with gloss and emboss finish. Lots of stuff on here. If you hate the movie, you hate the movie. I, I agree, the artwork is not incredible. <laughs> I've, I guess I've touched a nerve with Hannibal once again. The comments is, <laughs> are just going off. Uh, Ash loves the artwork. Sibner you know says, "Great hey, Ash, score. I'm happy for you. I hope you. I hope you order it and enjoy it. <laughs> I, I, I never want people to get the impression when I say something sucks that you shouldn't get it, unless I explicitly say that, because I might say that if it's like whack or something. But if it's like I just don't like it, then like that's just my opinion. And I hope that if you like it, 
you have a great new release to enjoy. And I mean that genuinely. So I, I will agree with Sibner too. This is much better than Red Dragon and Hannibal Rising. But I secretly like Wait. Them all. Wait. Shit. Am I having sick brain right now? Am I getting this confused with what I'm getting it confused with Red Dragon? Whoops. <laughs> For I can't this... you didn't like this one either. I thought it was okay. If I'm getting it, you know what? I'm going to double check my letterbox real quick because I uh, I might have just. Hannibal Rising is myself. a wild movie. Hannibal Rising okay, has Red Dragon so many is the problems. ones. The Brett Ratner joint. I yep. fucking hated this. It's awful. Hannibal. Let me see. I watched this one a while ago and I remember thinking it was okay. Yeah. So let's just pretend the last five minutes didn't happen because <laughs> I got my movies confused. Although I still don't like the artwork. <laughs> What's going on, Ken? Uh, <laughs> Celeste is right. Hannibal is still the only movie I've fallen asleep in the theater on. Oh, hey, Ken. What's up? Uh, no, this did not come up in conversation last night, Stan. <laughs> Ronnie, just want to say when I say something sucks, <laughs> I do not want you to buy it. <laughs> you know what? That's the confidence I need to have, even when I'm talking about the wrong movies. <laughs> you know what? Yes. Don't buy it, because I hate it. Well, now I'm That's curious. Did you... I don't remember seeing a short for Hannibal Rising. Have you watched that one yet? I have not watched that one, no. And I didn't Dude. even do a short for Hannibal, because that was Hannibal... fucking, like three years ago that I watched that. <laughs> Hannibal Rising is in the ICU. It is, oh, like, okay. heavily well, then implied. I have to watch it. Um, and it's also got an official letterbox list going, by the way, for that. <laughs> yes, the Celeste disconnected IC. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, this this probably should happen. Uh, going oh, from Hannibal at the ICU to Ruby Gilman's Teenage Kraken. Uh, this is coming on September 26th. And I've not seen this, but I've heard it's actually surprisingly great. Uh, and for nice. a studio release. They went all out. Feature commentary with the director, a co-director, producer, head of character animation, head of cinematography, a whole bunch of people. Deleted scenes with intros by the co-director, uh, meeting the cast, meeting the humans behind the cast, meeting the humans behind the cast. That doesn't work. Meeting the humans behind the characters. Uh, stories, besties, drawing guide, all kinds of stuff. I mean, this looks like a pretty loaded release. Yeah, I've never heard of this, but cool. Uh, Anthony's always excited. Sibner says, I went and saw a test screening of Hannibal Rising years ago. Harvey Weinstein was there. Oh. Ouch. That's uh, unfortunate. Uh, Chris Silvestri, Hannibal Rising does have a Blu-ray release in the UK. I have it over on the shelf, and it looks pretty dang good. I still can't get over that I roasted the wrong movie for like five it's, minutes straight. It's really <laughs> funny, though. I gotta admit. <laughs> Look, I'm uh, sick. I have, an, I have a built-in excuse for all my embarrassing mistakes today. It's fine. Uh, Carrie Mulligan says, uh, Gilman was fun, but nothing that reaches Pixar levels. That makes sense. Uh, so this one, Cannibal Holocaust. Getting a 4K from Play on Pictures, but in Italy, which is odd because they're a German company. And they're doing this as part of their Midnight Classics collection. And they're only selling it on something called their Fan Factory site. I'm still very confused by this. Uh, even more confusing is all kinds of people were gushing over this. Very excited. And I used the word gushing on purpose there for the movie. Um, this is uncut in Italy for the first time, supposedly. Hmm. And uh, the only way that you're going to be able to watch anything on this disc or whatever that's coming from them uh, the, the film will be with U.S. English audio, as it was made here. Um, but then, none of the features. It's all Italian. So if you want this for the special book, uh, that's it. All you're going to be able to do is watch the film. Yeah. Um, I think, isn't Grindhouse doing this in the U.S.? Yeah. And they yeah, have the animal is, cruelty free cut, so I'll just get that one. <laughs> which is why I was shocked everybody was so excited of this. Uh, but yeah, this one, I mean, it's got a big book. It's got three postcards, the CD. If you speak Italian, this looks great. Yeah. I don't know. I think people just really like this movie a lot. So they're excited. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was next, so I was just eager to get to it. Speaking of liking a movie. On the screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Best Buy exclusive 4K steelbook of The Wicker Man is coming on October 17th. You can pre-order it now. Uh, it does say on the front of this, uh, the final cu- the final cut, Reborn in Glorious 4K. So it's, it's very cheap. This is like $22. So it is yeah. probably mm-hmm. only the final cut. And then uh, it probably will have way less special features than the UK version. So why don't you tell us about The Wicker Man, Celeste? Uh, it's okay. Watch the Nicolas Cage version instead. <laughs> COVID must have really fucked you up. <laughs> no, it's 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 been rough. Um, can you see it? I have my uh, portrait. Oh, hold post- on. Let me let me make you full screen. screen. It's kind of hard to show it on screen, but hey, there it is. Yeah, there we go. Nice. I have the whole thing it's tattooed amazing. on my arm. It's my favorite movie of Not all me. time. Not me. What the heck? This is fun. There we go. Yeah. Okay. This is my favorite film of all time. Um, and I did a discussion with um, Tony, who was here in the comments, the uh, the imprint podcast discussion, talking about why I love it so much. And thank you, Christopher. I appreciate that. Um, and what was I saying? Oh, um, when people ask me why I like it so much, I've been referring them to uh, that conversation because it's not a short answer to that question. Um, Yeah, for sure. Um, I have the imprint edition. We actually might be talking about it later. Uh, So I won't talk too much more about the film itself. Um, That one, I hope they do put out a... Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I, mm, I got to tell you, I don't necessarily hate that film for how bad it is. And it really is truly that bad. I, I mainly don't like it because I really do have to clarify every time I talk about it because there is genuine confusion. Like recently, I told someone at work that it was my favorite movie and they looked at me like, really? Why? <laughs> I was like, the, the original, not the, mm, you know. And so that clarification alone irritates me um what's your favorite cut we'll get to that in a second um i hope that imprint does a standard edition of that because the 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 artwork is amazing and i'm glad i have it for that but like the features that they did on that are astounding like i watched all of them and they're fucking amazing like i really hope that that doesn't get lost to out of print land and they do a standard for that because it's it's really great um well, beyond that, too, I also hope people don't overshadow it because, oh, there's suddenly a 4K release of it. It is an mm-hmm. incredible boutique release of one of the best films of all time. It is. But it is not in 4K, which I know a lot of people were like, uh, I feel like that's going to happen soon. And they were kind of wishy-washy on it. And I get that. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have bought it if Avery didn't buy it for me for my birthday a couple of years ago, which is really sweet. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about this because those those... UK ones were announced and I was like, Jesus, these prices, like it was like a $50 steel book and like $80 for the big chunky mm-hmm. boy one. Um, which like, I'm so excited that this uses that same artwork. Cause it's my favorite art that I've ever seen commissioned for this. Um, and I think what they did with it is really clever. Yeah. Uh, I'm still deciding if I want to get one or both of those imports. I don't know that I can justify it anymore when I can get just about everything <laughs> I want out of it for 20 bucks right. here. But we'll see. Like it has like that pop out artwork and a few extra features. Although I don't know how many more features I really need after going through everything on the imprint set. You know, <laughs> true. Um, and it's just the price tag is a lot. Like if it was forty bucks, like yeah, okay, I'm in. You know, um, eighty dollars or whatever. We'll see. But <sighs> talking a lot about this because I love it. But like, good. I think you said um, it's only going to be the final cut in four K. And to answer the other person's question um that's really the only one i would need in 4k because it's the only one i'm really interested in rewatching consistently going forward um the theatrical just isn't as good you lose a lot of really critical scenes in that and the um the director's cut or whatever the like longer one it's more awkward like the amount of inserts that are in it that go back and forth yep. it's not a very fluid viewing experience and it's not the one i would recommend people watch for the first time and i don't think you need it in 4k when the majority of the extra stuff is in standard definition it just doesn't really make, make a lot of sense to me um so i don't but man it's so good um 
yeah and it's like only 20 bucks um Actually, that leads me into my next question. I'm gonna, I'm definitely getting this, but I also want that uh, Mist 4K steelbook that's coming out soon. Yes. Should I go ahead and pre-order both of those? Because with the um, Best Buy steelbooks, literally all I've done so far is wait till it comes out and hope that it's there when I drive to the store, and it always has been. <laughs> I would pre-order both of them if you want them. I see them both selling okay. out before release. Okay. Good to know. I'll do that then. <laughs> um, so yeah, people, we had more than one. There was two or three that asked, what is the best cut of this? Or what is the cut to watch? Or what is your favorite cut? Um, there's really only one answer to that the final cut is the answer. Um, the yeah. director's cut is there's some odd ex exposition. There's a lot of like wasted time scenes that just didn't need to be there. The theatrical, it was missing that, that something and, the final cut uh, is called the final cut for pretty, a reason. Pretty like critical scenes in that theatrical yeah. cut. Um, like to me, like just essential scenes in that film. Um, but yeah, I, I watched them back to back to back. Kind of, I was skipping through the other two um, to kind of nail down the differences and have a good answer for people when they ask me this. Um, and yeah, the, the the longer cut, like it's good to have. Like I'm glad I have a copy of it to watch, but. Right. Yeah, there's just something where there's actually more standard definition footage of the same scenes that are in the final cut. I'm not sure exactly why, how it works. It must have been something to do with the, the fluidity or the continuity to make those scenes work. Yeah. Um, you just you end up spending a lot of time watching the film in standard definition and it just doesn't feel right, you know, and it's just it's jarring. It comes back and forth a lot. Um, so. Yep, I completely agree there. Getting midsummer vibes from the cover art. I mean, there's a reason for that. <laughs> very, very much uh, obvious <laughs> reason for that. Uh, okay, I uh, won't spend too much time on this since it's already over. But if you are so inclined, last night we did our first live show for the Incinerator on uh, this channel and on the other podcast channel. This is a podcast I also co-host, and um, we did the films of Ridley and Tony Scott and. Uh, because of Tony Scott, this is an episode that we are giving all of the proceeds from uh, donations to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And we're still sending those in for the next like 24 hours from now. So if you give that a watch, uh, take a screenshot of your donation or send it into the Venmo here. And uh, we're going to post how much we raised all together. And last I checked, it was a sizable amount. It was over 500 bucks. So nice. Uh, yeah, please give it a watch. It was a lot of fun. Very chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Walking Dead is getting a complete Blu-ray collection in the U.S. And they're going to try to entice people because this will be a 54-disc collection. But it will have an exclusive bonus disc with a behind-the-scenes documentary called The Walking Dead Making of the Final, uh, Final Season. And this will be the first time that it's on physical media. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of stopped following this a long time ago. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that that's cool that it's all there in one place for people. I know that this has a very passionate fan base and um, I'm a big fan of the sort of one stop shop for uh, a whole TV series. You don't get a lot of that anymore. So I think that's cool. That's true. And then next up. <laughs> I Kill Giants is coming as a Blu-ray steelbook exclusively from Walmart, yet another Walmart exclusive steel. Uh, this one, if you go to the listing, it says it's 4K, but it's very clearly a Blu-ray DVD steelbook. Uh, so once again, Walmart just showing why they're getting the exclusives. Uh, I've never seen this movie. Uh, I've heard that the cover is very misleading and nothing like the film. So hopefully better. <laughs> <laughs> on my hater shit today and i apologize <laughs> next just up goofy looking artwork but that's okay next up is asian david lynch starring in bad city coming on <laughs> september 19th from will go usa uh i got about 18 comments today saying that when they saw this cover the only thing they could think of was david lynch and i get it I don't. I don't think my uh, illness will permit a David Lynch impression today. But you know, <laughs> you'll just have to trust that it's good. 
Yeah. Uh, next up, BFI is releasing 23 Seconds to Eternity on November 6th in the UK. Uh, the KLF became the biggest selling singles act in the world in 1991 with a series of international smash hits, including Acid House, Anthems, 3 AM Eternal, Last Train to Trans Central, and Justified and Ancient, released on their own KLF Communications record label. This is going to have so many things. This release is the first ever compilation of KLF Communications films, and this release will feature an array of special features, an illustrated booklet featuring rare and previously unseen material, making of documentaries, uh, shorts, music videos, all kinds of stuff. This is going to be huge. If you're into the early 90s music, this seems like an incredible purchase. Yeah, I've never heard of this, but neat. The BFI has been like killing it, doing really, really nice have been. editions with like really good special features for oftentimes exact same films that Criterion puts out. So, yeah. uh, Caveman says that Walking Dead set will be two hundred fifty dollars, looking like a crappy stacked disc case. Uh, to make you feel a little better, it looks like it's only going to be one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> I gotta say with the stack discs, I gotta I gotta tell you, like investing in a disc wallet will save you a lot of headaches. Um Ooh, yeah. Because even when they're done well, like at a certain number of discs, it's just very clunky and ridiculous. And I'm just like, no, I just rather put it all in my little disc wallet and then it's all there. I could flip through it. They're all protected and nice. You could fit a lot. It's good for storage space. Like especially for those criterion sets that a lot of people don't like. Yes. Um the real big boys that are like not particularly practical for getting discs in and out. Um, a $10 disc wallet will save you a lot of headaches. <laughs> the worst part though. And I don't, I don't think I've gotten many uh, super stacked releases like this in recent years, but I, in my history, nine times out of 10, they have pretty much always arrived with at least five to 12 discs, just free balling in there. Uh, and Jeez. I'm not even just talking about stuff shipped to me. I Stuff bought in the store is most of the time knocked loose on the inside as well. Knocked loose. Nice. I, I'm <laughs> trying to... I, this is the... You've missed it. I've, I've put in 18 musical references so far. Tonight. Oh, really? I'm I'll kidding. have to count. I'm I'm, no, I'm counting it on the replay. <laughs> uh, the closest I got was... Um, hi, Ashby Owls, whoever you may be. Um <laughs> The closest I got to that recently was uh, uh, the Twin Peaks set. And yeah. like they did a pretty good job consolidating all those discs into a reasonable size. Um, but like uh, it, it was a nightmare when you were actually going through the process of watching right. it, like kind of getting under the stacked discs and like kind of past, you know, like you had to kind of like unlock the fucking bridge or whatever to get to it. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm just putting them all in the disc wallet. It's very easy right there i like this better <laughs> well i don't think we're going to see any stacked discs in the next release which is another walmart steelbook i believe uh this is a mill creek walmart exclusive steelbook of walk hard the dewey cox story uh this will have both cuts and it seems like all of the bonus features from the previous releases and i love this god dang movie i'm not seeing it You've, oh man! I think no, but I bet it's. I've heard it's really good. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll definitely be checking it out eventually. It it like full power brought so many uh, musical biopics to a dead stop in the middle of the uh, when was this two thousand six or seven something like that yeah two thousand seven mm -hmm. so we had Walk the Line and Eight Mile and a whole bunch of others that were musical biopics was the main thing in the early two thousands. And this came out and everybody stopped. And it it is it is a gift to humanity. <laughs> Will's comment made me laugh. <laughs> Together at last. They've been uh they've been partners for a long time. Yeah. Um I'm not stoked with Walmart exclusive steelbooks at the moment. Uh, I bought the Skin Rink one, given that it is the best horror film of the past ten years. And uh <laughs> let me guess they sent you the standard. Yeah, they sent me the fucking slipcover version. Um, and it was also damaged on top of that. Of course it was. And then for a second, I was like, whatever. I don't know if it's worth it. Because their returns process is not as smooth as Amazon's. But like, I was like, you know what? No, I ordered the thing. I want the thing. And so I sent it back. 
And that was like over a month ago. And it says that they haven't received it. I definitely sent it. I printed the label and everything. And it's just still sitting in like, you know, limbo. And I don't know Jeez. when that's going to happen. And I know, I know I'm probably just going to have to talk to a person and then they'll just do it. But like, you know, the whole thing. That sucks. Yeah, it, it it's unfortunate. But, you know, whatever. It was cheap. So that's true. Uh, speaking of what will probably be stacked discs, they are releasing mm -hmm. a Psych Complete Collection. This will have all of the episodes plus all three of the movies. This will have all eight seasons, all three movies, audio commentaries, deleted extended scenes, podcast commentary, Psych the Musical, Gag Reel, Montages, Psych After Show, Was It Something I Said, Music Video, Psych Outs, and more. I've never seen Psych. I've heard it's really great. Um, it was always on like after Monk when I would watch it when I was a kid. Um, that makes sense. So I kind of caught a little of it by osmosis and um, I had friends that really liked it. Um, I think Avery likes it too, but I asked her today because I saw that this was announced. I was like, you like Psych, right? And she was like, yeah, it's okay. They had some really, really bad trans jokes in it. I remember that. And I was like, yeah, that's doesn't surprise me. <laughs> hmm. Pretty par for the course for that kind of thing. Sibner says, there were psych movies uh yeah i think they all came out in the last like handful of years in the the, the streaming times there's a twin peaks episode on psych nice hmm. i'm not entirely sure what that means but i'll have to check that out uh next like, does it up. just reference it does it parody it or is it like co-directed by mark frost or something you know <laughs> like i'm not sure what that means <laughs> I'm I'm sure it's a parody. They did a, like they did the the musical episode. They did a few supposedly. Mm. Uh, it helped okay. nudge the return of Twin Peaks. One of the end of episodes is influenced by the series. Hmm. So they're doing like a like a Twin Peaks bit or something. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next up is Eureka announcements from just this morning. Uh, they are releasing Heroes and Villains three films starring Jet Li which uh, surprised a lot of people because they did not expect some of these to get released ever. This is going to have The Enforcer, Dr. Y in the scripture with no words, and Hitman. Uh, this is coming across three different discs in a slipcover with uh, multiple audio commentaries and a bunch of archival featurettes and looks like a solid release. I mean, Jet Li was great and has not had many really good uh, boutique releases, so I'm stoked on this. Oh, that's exciting and is going to excite Celeste. Practically the entire cast of Twin Peaks comes back and plays different okay, characters. Cool, cool. But it's basically yeah, Twin Peaks. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. How much of Psych do I have to watch to understand it? <laughs> I'm not watching the whole thing to get to it, but you know. <laughs> the hard part, you have to watch Twin Peaks and then still not understand it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hey, I Brian's... understood Twin Peaks pretty okay, I think. <laughs> Brian says, Hitman and the Enforcer are just amazing movies. That's great. You know, Walmart, if you returned any sealed movies to the store, they rip the plastic off in front of you, check the contents, yet won't accept an opened return and won't be resold, restocked. Yeah. I guess that does technically make sense to me, even though it is kind of obnoxious in practice. <laughs> Yay, the worlds could always use more Jet Li. Not a fan of these select three four, or four films from a specific actor. Uh, Chris wants to know, is Vinegar coming out with a Prophecy Collection? Yes, that will be around Black Friday. Uh, Sibner says, I watched it and didn't watch Psych, and I still enjoyed the episode, so that helps. But Will says you have to watch it in its entirety. I feel like um, mystery person Ashby Owls is messing with me, but thank you, D. Sibner. appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, next up is the Royal Tramp Collection from Eureka. This is coming on November 13th in the UK. This art. It's something. I mean, <laughs> wow. I feel like a lot of these, I don't know. It seems to be the martial arts stuff that's getting some, some rough cover arts. And I'm wondering if there's something is getting lost in translation or something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Well, this is definitely not Kung Fu Bob art. Uh, this says, an epic two-part wuxia comedy based on the writings of acclaimed Chinese novelist Jin Young, Royal Tramp 1 and Royal Tramp 2 star Stephen Chow as a cowardly bard who finds himself part of a real adventure when he's inducted into a sect of revolutionaries. This will be brand new 
4K restorations for both films across two Blu-ray discs. Uh, you got new audio commentaries by Frank Jang and then one with Mike Leader and Arna Venema. A career-spanning interview with Hong Kong actress Helen La Lan, uh, courtesy of the Frederick and Brazine Video Archive. Two archival interviews, some trailers, and then a booklet, of course. All right. Neat. Hell yeah. One of my favorite announcements of the week. The Muppets Take Manhattan is getting a 4K release from Sony, so it's going to look freaking incredible on October 24th, and I can't wait to see it. But maybe the best part of this is they went the same route as uh, Matilda, where they got a new audio commentary from Danny DeVito. They got a new feature commentary for this from Frank Oz, and that's really, Whoa. really exciting. That is exciting. Big Muppets fan. We've established this. Um, I've not seen this one, I don't think. So I'm excited about that. At the, this is one. the first Muppets in 4K, right? It sure is. And it's a classic one, which is really cool. Um, this reminds me something exciting about the Disney thing. Maybe, maybe this means that a, a re-release of a Muppets Christmas Carol with the um, uncut version in 4K is in the cards. Oh, that would be amazing. Please. That would be amazing. Please. Uh, so film. that would look so good honestly yeah, i agree fully <laughs> brian says this is another not this one but the last one we were talking about this is another one of those 90s <laughs> hong kong movies that i just think you have to be in the mood for it's a comedy weifu historical epic with the subs i saw the comedy doesn't translate really at all oh that's not enticing um uh, psych is an awesome homage to the 80s i think you both would love it the movies were made for tv special reunion extra long episodes i mean i like that kind of thing like it was it was produced in an era of like tv shows i like were coming out i i don't i don't i'm not against it it's just really long and i don't have the time investment for really long tv shows anymore um yeah um all i have to say uh Craig from Deaf Crocodile just says, don't tell anyone. I've not seen any of the Muppets features. Uh, Gregory Bartholomew Rogers, right now, <laughs> you need to check out at least the Muppet movie. And then the original on top, one, yeah. Yes. And then on top of that, you really just should kind of dive in. You got to go with Takes Manhattan. You got to go with The Christmas Carol. I think with your love of animation, it's not, they're not animated, but they're kind of in that realm with like the, yes. the puppet acting you know um i don't know i'm just like i'm not like aghast or anything i'm just excited for you that you get to experience them because like i experienced them pretty late and i was just like this is so wonderful where has this been i don't know why it took me so long but i feel so happy that i'm here you know with these wonderful wonderful films it's just so yeah. great so yeah i'm excited for you I love that Newt Shack liked that I just made up his middle name was Bartholomew and no comment on the fact that I named him Gregory. Probably the um, most underrated of Jesus's apostles. <laughs> and the Lord saith to Gregory. You know, I think Bartholomew was flayed alive. So that dude got a raw deal. <laughs> Pretty rough. Uh, oh, I think he was flayed and crucified. Yeah. One up in Jesus on that one, I guess. I don't know. I really hope uh, we get even a Blu ray, but I would love a 4K of the uh, Muppets Treasure Island. I love that shit. It's a, a good one. Tim Curry is good in that. Um, is it not on Blu ray yet? No. Oh, that's unfortunate. Not at all. Can you imagine if that you guessed that right? His middle name was <laughs> Bartholomew. Craig would be like, wait a minute. I feel like a <laughs> shiver would go down my spine if somebody just guessed that on air <laughs> randomly. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I didn't tell him that. That's weird. That's hilarious. Uh, MGM is releasing the Wild Party literally today. Uh, I, I had <laughs> never heard that this was coming out. Um, it is supposedly available now. Uh, not a whole lot of information on it. It's a Merchant Ivory film. Um, Rough artwork. Yeah. I mean, the image is fine or whatever. It just looks not in the proper resolution or something. I don't know. <laughs> that's uh, that's some of these MGM ones recently, sadly. Uh, but then Janice came out today and said that our Janice Contemporaries collection is going to expand in November. These are all coming on November 21st, and the first one is Godland from 20... In fact, I think all three of these are from 2022. 
Uh, this mm -hmm. will have a Meet the Filmmaker segment, a new interview with the director, and then a, a 2013 short film by the director oh, that's and a fun. trailer. I don't know about the short film, but that interview and the film you can find on the Criterion channel. Just a pro tip for anybody who wants to try before you buy or just wants to watch it. Interesting. I am glad that the Janus contemporaries are cheaper than mm -hmm. the Criterion, at least. And so it, it does make sense to have a little less on the features there, but sure. I'd, I'd still prefer more, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, the next one is the Eight Mountains. I was this gonna say I'm just excited to see what the cases look like, the packaging. Yeah, and we haven't seen that at all yet. That's a good point for the real, real criteria nerds who I am still sort of one of, and I definitely know people who are really into the like minutia of like the criterion packaging and all the isms with that. Um, I'm excited to see what it looks like. You know, well, and maybe the bigger question we still don't know: like, is Barnes and Noble going to get those in store? Are they going to be a part of the Criterion half-off sale? Yeah, all, all exciting stuff. Uh, this one is also going to have a meet the filmmakers with a new interview with the directors. Uh, there is a making of new documentary on this featuring the cast and crew and a trailer. Oh, that's really cool. I don't know. These seem to be on par features wise with some of the Criterion stuff coming out. Um, Sad, but that's true. really cool. I always thought it was just going to be like one interview from the Criterion channel on it. Right. But that's really neat. Um yeah, I also just really love this move to highlight contemporary cinema because, like, I've had this conversation a few times at this point, but it does feel like we're entering into a second silent era where, like, this stuff is just getting forgotten about. Oh, yeah. Um, like, immediately. <laughs> and uh, a lot of the emphasis is on looking backwards, which I think is good and is obviously a huge part of this project. But, like, we should still be keeping up and like preserving the things that are happening now, especially on the kind of art house side of things. Of course. And I mean, one of the other things that's not necessarily art house related, but I, that's why, you know, lately some of my interviews, I'm talking to these labels about saving some of these film uh, streaming films or films that go to a film festival and then die and nobody sees them. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just glad like dark star pictures or terrorism mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. Utopia, some of these other ones that are Utopia really puts out some real like off the wall, like kind of just like streaming documentaries and stuff, stuff that I would never think would like sell or be a safe, but they just don't seem to care. They're just like put it all out, and I think that's really yeah. cool. I like Utopia a lot. Yeah, Utopia is great. Uh, last one from Janice for November is Tori and Lokita. And uh, this one will have, again, a Meet the fil Filmmakers, a new interview with the directors, and a trailer on this one. Uh, this is from a two-time Palm Door winner. That's pretty impressive. Haven't seen it. Me neither. I'm interested in all of these, but um, they are pretty readily accessible, which is a nice thing. Uh, Craig says, the rough part is newer films are a hard sell on physical media. Mm -hmm. True. Everyone yeah. just wants to stream everything. I get it. There's also not that kind of exciting element of discovery with it either. You know, I feel like that's part of the draw with like what sells these things. That's true. Uh, last announcement for the week is yet another <laughs> Walmart exclusive Poorly photoshopped. Real rough artwork here. It's real bad. What is going on? They did my man Adrian, the nose Brody, real dirty on this one. Okay, so like I genuinely have liked Adrian Brody in quite a few things. This looks awful on the cover. It's real rad. It's a. Uh, it's real rough. Yeah. <laughs> I, what? Mm, yeah. I don't even know like what comments to make without sounding like I'm just being a dick. I, I don't well, know. at least you probably aren't disparaging some independent artist on this one, you know. <laughs> uh, Sivner, if anything, didn't need a steel book. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I don't know anything about the movie. By the way, it could be great. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> That's some black crush on his beard. 
Uh, someone looked at that and approved it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Have at it. Why not? That artwork is not very clean. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right. So that's that. That's coming on September 26th, by the way. You can pre order it now. Uh, I will exciting. Be doing that promptly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get you two copies. Mm, thank you. Uh, happily. Now we always talk about what's coming out next week because we seem to forget sometimes. Uh, unfortunately, it is the last week of the month, which means a lot of this is going to be Vinegar Syndrome and partner labels such as this Pied Piper release. Hi, Craig. Uh, but everything else, we got Bride of Chucky and the, the next four sequels from the Chucky franchise coming in 4K from Scream Factory. The Flash 4K. Hey, maybe nine more people will be able to see it now. Uh, Three Days of the Condor on 4K, the wide release of the Black Emanuel box, the Infinity Pool uncut 4K steelbook, uh, Elizabeth 4K, I'm sure this is going to look sumptuous, uh, Staying Alive in 4K from Kino, Hustle and Flow in 4K, I probably need to get that one. I remember liking that a lot. Did you see Promising Young Woman? No, I haven't. I do own it the blu-ray because it was on sale for like three dollars randomly but no i haven't seen it yet hmm. all right i still haven't seen it yet either <laughs> uh new fist of fury from arrow video the life of emile zola from warner archive wichita from warner archive taxi hunter from 88 films little women 1933 from warner archive uh, the Complete Story of Film. This one is coming out from Music Box Films, and this thing has been delayed, I think, like four times just this summer. Uh, supposedly, it is finally coming out. So um, Ooh, if you are really into that, just remember to get that. The City of the Living Dead is a good opportunity to ask a question I wanted to ask today. Uh, has anybody gotten their special gift in from the Cauldron website yet? It is the Gates of Hell slipcover from Texas Frightmare. Okay, it's that exact one? Yes. Okay, because I I can't tell you how many times I almost pulled the trigger on it, uh, just because that's one of my favorite films ever, and I wanted to have a nice slipcover on it. Yeah. But I'm going to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of that art, and so I think I'm going to... Uh, I like the one that they did, like the City of the Living Dead one, with like the yeah. bleeding eyes and shit. I thought that was gorgeous. I got. Um, I ordered the original commissioned poster from that. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to hold out for somebody to sell me that one. Uh, in that case, because it's still like forty bucks plus shipping. I mean, honestly, when I was looking at eBay, like to get the one I actually want would not be that much more expensive. So right. we'll see. Uh, let's see. Sibner says the Infinity Pool Steelbook has already sold out. Wow, really? Interesting. Damn. Uh, Craig says, noticed Amazon is using the Dave McKean artwork on the pre-order page. We've let them know, but afraid there may be upset folks when they get their disc. Interesting. Yeah. No idea how or why that happened. I noticed that. Huh. Uh, keep going with this. Uh, Gay Prey from Warner Archive. Warner Archive is one I definitely want to get. Um, let's see. I would, uh, Greg, I would love a 4K of the 2000 Scooby-Doo movie. Some of those effects would look real fun in 4K. <laughs> yes, they would. Uh, let's see. Off Balance and the other part of the Cauldron, uh, the next bundle that should be shipping here pretty soon. Father's Little Dividend from Warner Archive, which is such an odd title for that film. Uh, Spin Out with Elvis is coming from Warner Archive as well. Uh, I need to get that Tiffany Lust. That packaging is it's just so gorgeous. It is and crazy it's, good. And it's like a lesbian thing, I think. Yeah, I, I got to get it. I got to get all of that. Lots of Melusine things coming out this month. Uh, Last House mm. on the Left from 2009 from Arrow. Uh, Malone from Kino Lorber. Yeah, it's a busy week. And unfortunately, it's That's a the, lot. A lot of stuff. It's the end of the year, which means it's going to be mostly busy from here basically throughout the end of December. Well, crazy. 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 You know, physical media yeah. is dead, so it's probably pack it up. <laughs> As we had three legendary announcements back to back to back. Love that. Uh, all right. Want to get into some soundtracks? Yeah, let's do it. So obviously there's a difference here between score and soundtrack and we weren't going for any 
uh, specification on if it had to be, mm -hmm. you know, created in the film. It can be full blown needle drops or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I have an odd list. And I feel like if you asked me in three days, none of my five would be on my list again. There were ones that definitely came to mind immediately that I'm just like, yeah, those are like a pretty core part of my like actual musical diet that I just right. listen to all the time. So, like, that's obvious ones. But, like, yeah, I had a hard time thinking. I mean, I, I landed on five, but I, I agree if I really thought about it more or if I rewatched some things, I might be like, oh, this is, this is amazing. Like, this is one that's got to be on there, you know, so right. I don't want to I don't want to put this as like my definitive top five or anything like that. The top like three probably are. But like, you know, when I got this idea and I brought it to you, um, soundtracks is such a vague word and people mean it different is. things when they talk about it. But I kind of wanted to think of it more holistically, like the needle drops and the score and the music that's actually happening in the film, right. you know, diegetic and non-diegetic music happening within the film. Um, but I didn't want to think just score or just, and you know, there's also like a thing that doesn't really happen anymore where like you'd have an accompanying soundtrack CD with like yeah. songs that are and are not actually in the film. So like, there's a lot of ways you can look at it, but I wanted to kind of just leave it to you to decide what that means to you. Yeah, And I, when I was making my own list, I was like, when there is music happening in this film, which which ones really stick out to me as like adding a lot to the experience of the film and which ones, you know, can I kind of listen to outside of that context and like still love, you know? I, uh, I do want to give a quick shout out. This would never make my list, but I really want to shout out the freaking epic metalcore album of Queen of the Damned that I played yeah. <laughs> so many times in the early 2000s. So if you've never looked at Queen of the Damned soundtrack or seen the film, well, listen to this list of, of people on this. Static X, Disturbed, mm -hmm. Linkin Park, The Deftones, <laughs> Marilyn Manson, Papa Roach, Godhead, Orgy, Disturbed, again, again. Static <laughs> X, again, Earshot, Dry Cell, Tricky, and Kidney Thieves. That soundtrack got so worn out in my car <laughs> for so long. It, that thing that I was describing that you've just brought an example of felt like a very much of the 2000s and specifically of like a, like a new metal thing to do. <laughs> yes. well, uh, I think Jonathan Davis did all the music in that movie and like curated the soundtrack. I think that that's I'm remembering that correctly, but that checks out. To piggyback off of that, I brought one honorable mention in that category because I didn't really think it 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 counted. But like, right. this was a big deal to me when I was a kid. For like a brief moment, the Underworld movies were my favorite movies when I was a kid. Nice, um, partially because of Kate Beckinsale, and um, <laughs> at the time, my attraction to her. But in retrospect, the fact that I literally just want to look like that <laughs> is like. <laughs> But Underworld Evolution specifically was my favorite one. And it was my favorite movie, like, yeah. for a second. And I bought the soundtrack CD to it and actually discovered a good number of bands off of that. And um, I, I thought I still had it, but I think I sold it. So I couldn't bring it over here. But I have the track list pulled up. Not all of these are winners. So we'll skip some of these because some of these bands are like, <laughs> I don't even know who that is, honestly. <laughs> I love that you and I both did this <laughs> without planning it. <laughs> But we have Hawthorne Heights, My Chemical Romance, Slipknot, Alkaline Trio, Senses Fail, Atreyu, Trivium, Lacuna Coil, and Cradle of Filth covering the Misfits. It's kind of a banger soundtrack. I'm, I'm not really going to lie. Is. It really is. Oh, and a man. lot of these are remixes that you couldn't get anywhere else. And like, yes, they were pretty good, actually. And like I learned the or like I got accustomed to the remixes of some of these songs uh, yep. before the originals. Um I, st I still I still play this soundtrack from time to time because I, th I think it's pretty good. So nice. Uh, I do want to shout one more thing before we go into the top five. I talked about the Cohen brothers for a long time with Jeremy last week. Technically, mm -hmm. Inside Lewin Davis, or I mean, there's a few that could really make it, but I mean, obviously, I talked about soundtracks last week, so I don't want to go too deep into it. But oh, brother, where art thou? And inside Lou and Davis are both like all timers for me, so I'm not I'm not going to mention them tonight. Just remember that they're oh incredible. shit. 
I don't think Will is talking about the same Transformers that I am, but those ones actually had some decent soundtracks too for the uh, for uh, the butt rock new metal thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, You want me to go first or you want to go first? Yeah, go for it. All right. I will go first uh, with one that I I was thinking about this as I was making this list. I don't think I've ever mentioned this film on this channel yet. And that's shocking to me with how much I loved it. Empire Records. I love Empire Records. This movie is incredibly funny. um, But the best part is it has like an all-timer 90 soundtrack for it i mean the gin blossoms and the cranberries are so freaking like boiled into your soul in this film i love it so so much um this movie if you've never given the time for it i mean obviously with an empire records uh name you know it's going to be a musical uh movie if you've never seen it but it is it is so well done. I, I love everything about this movie. I, I really want to see like an updated special release for this movie because I feel like people nowadays just don't talk about it. I love Empire Records. So this is one that has been on my radar for a minute, but I've never actually seen. Um, but I, I, I have it on good authority that I would like it a lot. So yeah. Is it is it a proper musical? Uh it's it's close. I... Okay, because that's something I meant to say was that I decided not to put any musicals in mine, even though I would count that in like this category. Um, but when I was looking at my collection and thinking about my favorites, it was it's a different thing, you know, and it would be hard yeah. to not make it all musicals if I decided yeah. to do that. And I wanted to kind of highlight a different thing. So, uh, yeah, but there's some real I great ones that I like a lot, you know, technically, I, I did choose a couple, but I'm going to explain why. Oh, that's totally fine. I wanted it to be open ended just for my own brain. It decided to categorize it as a different thing. Yeah. So, you know. All right, Celeste, number five for you. Um, I rewatched this this week to kind of double check that the soundtrack works as well for me as I thought it did. Um, but I went with The Graduate. Um, oh. Simon and Garfunkel is one of my favorite bands ever. Yeah. Um, they're very special to me. And um, watching the special features on this, I don't know how accurate this is, but a few people on here had said that this was the first example of just using popular music in the film's soundtrack, like not playing in like not being used diegetically. Um, And it seemed kind of like incidental. Like I think the story here is that Mike Nichols was just using their music for pacing purposes in the editing room. And that was just like, you know what? I think this really works. I'm just going to keep it. And uh, had Paul Simon kind of write a song for it, although he was too busy (laughs) to actually do it. (laughs) Um, so there's a lot of the same songs that just kind of repeat a lot throughout the film, but it gives it this kind of like beautiful melancholy that I think is at the core yeah. of this film that really works. And the, their music is just so good that like, I don't know. I wish there was more of it, to be honest. Like I wish there were more of their songs as opposed to the same two that kind of get used a lot, but, um, yeah, this th- that was the most memorable part of it when I like thought about having seen it and um, made me want to rewatch it was the Simon and Garfunkel tracks in it. Um, yeah, I really love this. Uh, I love this movie and um, it definitely has its problems. There's parts of it that haven't aged super well, but like um, yeah. the soundtrack certainly has aged beautifully. So, yeah. Uh, Stan says, so this is basically collections of songs used in films rather than film scores. Yes. That is correct. We're we're not going with the scores at all. Uh, so my next one, number four, is okay. Uh, so this one's interesting. Um, I really wanted to give a shout out to what I thought was a pretty innovative soundtrack at the time, um, and that is 1993's Judgment Night. Uh, Emilio Estevez and uh, a handful of other like really great names. In that movie, nice little crime caper came out on uh, Warner Archive. Um, this this soundtrack is kind of incredible. So right after you know Walk This Way from Aerosmith and uh, Run DMC came out, and it was this big smash hit. Judgment Night did that like five times on their soundtrack, and it is so good. They they were able to combine multiple like big artists to get them to work together and it put out a soundtrack that worked so well as this like low-key action film and if you've never seen judgment night 
it's usually cheap on Warner Archive. It's a great looking Blu-ray. Strongly recommend it. Great acting from Emilio Estevez. Um, I love this film. Have you seen Judgment Night? Uh -uh. It's good. It's real good. I think it's 1993, somewhere around there. Nice. Yeah. All right. Is it my turn then? Yeah. Why not? All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, next, I'm going to do Lords of Chaos. Um, this one was like <laughs> really. Hold on. Hold on. No, this I one love was it. Really like shit on a lot when it came out because black metal fans are the worst group of people on the face of the planet. But um, I have a pretty actually lengthy review of this on my letterbox um, that I originally wrote on my Rate Your Music account because uh, I really, really loved this. Like everything about it, I think it works on just about every level it attempts to work on. Yeah. Um, but the soundtrack, especially, what's really great about it is that it's just a bunch of Siguro songs that like and like really good ones too. Um, and that's one of my all time favorite bands. And so I had no idea that that was going to happen when I saw it in the theater. And I was just like, oh, that's Sigur Rós. I love that song. And then it just kept happening. It kept happening. Yep. I was just like, well, this is fun. <laughs> this is one of my favorite bands, just like six or seven needle drops of their songs throughout the film. Um, and also the recreations of the Mayhem songs on here are like really, really good, like really well done, sound great um, in the film and like in the sound mix and everything. And just like, yeah. You know, you kind of get those two halves of like, or two parts of my like favorite styles of music. Um, you know, Mayhem and Cigarettes being two of my favorite bands, like just that shouldn't, or I think they do work together, but like, I don't think that would be immediately obvious. Um, and it's a really interesting choice and I think it works really well. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. So I really love the soundtrack on this one. Incredible. Incredible choice and really good double feature with Heavy Trip. Obviously, they're kind of yeah, Heavy Trip. <laughs> style, but God, those both of those movies are so good. If you want a funny and a serious, yeah, it'd be good. <laughs> uh, my number three, I'm going to go to an obvious one and then sort of scale down from here. Uh, my number three is almost famous. I I love this movie. Being so attached to music growing up and wanting to be in bands and hanging out with bands and uh, you know dabbling in online film journal journalism and, and watching. Watching Cameron Crowe's most personal uh, story being told on screen, featuring Elton John in you know this super intimate, super important scene, featuring David Bowie, the Beach Boy stuff that I grew up with forever. But again, Simon and Garfunkel, one of the most compelling scenes in the entire film. They, they've got so many just important scenes that dig deep in you you get these new context behind these songs that you never had before watching that film. And it becomes a part of you. And now every time when I hear those songs, I'm back inside almost famous and wondering why that wasn't me because it was the exact story I wanted. Mm -hmm. I've not seen it, <laughs> but I believe you. <laughs> that's one I've missed and I've been meaning to check out and like, I keep almost buying or renting it and it just keeps getting pushed to the side for other things. But, you know, I get it. Um, video store review. This is a good opportunity to go ahead and give a blanket honorable mention to Greg Araki's films because he, he has similar taste in music to me and he knows how to use music in his films. And it's clearly like as important to him as it is to me. And he's clearly like a punk kid who decided to make subversive films. Um, but yes, Mysterious Skin in particular, um, that Cigarro song at the end of the film, uh, if you've seen it, you know that that's like the most devastating film ever made. And like, I was like this close. I was like holding it together. And then I heard Cigarro start playing. I was like, okay, that's it. I can't <laughs> just sobbing. Like, if you want me to start crying, putting a Cigarro song in your soundtrack is, is probably the way to do it. Um, I don't know who that's a pro tip for, but you know, it's out there. So yes good shout out um yeah lots of cigar roast shout outs lots of them well you know they're like one of the best bands of all time so people people know that and they use them they use them well john waters i agree does a good job um his tastes aren't necessarily as aligned 
with mine, but like he, he uses the music to good effect in the films, which is what matters, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. I guess I'll go next. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. cool. <laughs> um, we talked about this earlier, but I'm going to go with the night of the hunter. This was the one that was a bit of a, a weirder pick because it's not yep. really like needle drops or anything, but the diegetic music in this film is like part of what makes it work so well and like made it stick in my brain so well and like what i go back to there's a really cool special feature on this um kino with the isolated music and effects there's just so much of it that like it's not one of those things where it feels like it's almost a musical but there's a lot of singing in it like the uh i'm not gonna do it because i'm sick but the the robert mitchum like the uh (laughs) the church songs he's singing throughout it's just I sing that to myself all the time, you know, and it's just like, uh, and, um, pretty fly the song that the girl sings on the raft. That's just such a haunting, beautiful scene. And, um, just one of the, just one of the first things that came to mind when I thought about what are films where the music inside of the film, like really elevates it to the next level. And, uh, yeah, Robert Mitchum singing, uh, Leaning on the everlasting arms is like got to be on the list somewhere. You know, it's terrifying. <laughs> it's so God good. Terrifying. And that scene where he sings it, and the 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 woman sings with him, it's just chilling stuff. It's so good. So, yeah, I love that movie so much. It's so good. Uh, Simoner says Forrest Gump is one of the best soundtracks of all time. Uh, people getting up on it now, but it does. And yeah, completely agree. It's needle drops throughout, and obviously there's. There's so many scenes that are shaped because of the music for that movie. Um, my number two, uh, this got mentioned in the chat many times just a few minutes ago. And the only reason I didn't say anything is because it's my number two. And I got to go with The Crow. Um, this soundtrack shaped so much of my music taste uh, growing up. You know, any any relation to like Sisters of Mercy or Marilyn Manson or anything mm-hmm. goth industrial nine inch nails was only because I had so much writing in this film. Um, I I've, I've got a tattoo on my back of a band that I fell in love with that basically ripped off like half the bands from the soundtrack. And I'm was close friends with them. It, it, this is the, like, this is the type of soundtrack that makes my entire future. The moment I hear it. And it is, so damn solid the entire way through i god this is one again wore it out so many times on my cd player well okay as a proper mall goth i have seen the crow so we're good on that but About time. What's, the, what's the band that you have tattooed uh project 86 yeah i don't know uh, a christian um, uh hardcore ish <laughs> band that uh they the they Christ sound all strikes again not not quite screaming. Well, he does scream, but not like the the screamo kind of scream. It's more mm-hmm. of like a industrial rock scream. It's mm-hmm. pretty damn good still. That a uh, Nine Inch Nails cover of the Joy Division song "Dead Souls" on that soundtrack fucking rips. It's it so rips. good. Yeah, that that whole thing is so so good. All right, my next pick is gonna be kind of a cheat, kind of a going outside of the trend um but i couldn't not include it i'm just gonna go with the whole lord of the rings trilogy um (laughs) but if i have to pick one i guess i'll do fellowship um because it's my favorite partially because of the music um this is one that i'm gonna pick not just because of the score but the score is incorporated into it and the way that howard shore writes this score like they almost feel like songs that are part of the world you know um like concerning hobbits is like such a banger like in any context like you can just listen to that and it's great um enya who i know our friend will is a fan of fucking kills it on these soundtracks um may it be is like one of my favorite songs ever um i don't know there's just so many little moments of music like inside of the films themselves and outside of the films and in the credit sequences and just like the lord of the rings soundtracks have been part of my life for quite some time and like part of what makes the film so good um so i know that that's maybe leaning a little bit heavy on score but just the way that all of the musical components are incorporated into this universe and in this film series like really really works for me well i don't know about that but i do love enya and she really elevates (laughs) these films a lot so (laughs) all right uh I do have a cheat that I'll mention after my number one. So 
uh, I, I wanted to, to name my number one and, and I'll share the other three that I was going to do as one pick, but I'm not going to soil my list with that. Uh, my number one is uh, a send out to uh, Gregory Rogers, as we discussed earlier. Uh, my number one is the Muppet movie. Um, Hell yeah. It is so freaking fundamental for me as a person that it probably should have been on my list now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> this is the first one I thought of. I mean, Rainbow Connection, moving right along. Moving right are, along. They are so important yeah. and genuinely moving when you watch the film, not only with nostalgia, but like for the first time with eyes of wonder watching these Muppets make the leap from things like Sesame Street and The Muppet Show to being out in middle America and filming in a way that does not look possible. I can't not listen to some of these songs and immediately be immediately thrust back into that position. I adore every single track on the soundtrack. It's really good. I love it. It probably should have been on there somewhere. Um, Chunking Express is another one. That's I'm thinking oh, that yeah. should have been on my list. Uh, the way that, I mean, it helps that dreams by the cranberries is like, easily like no shot one of the best songs ever written but like the way they use it in the film is just it's just wonderful but that's not my number one can you can you guess what my number one is? i can <laughs> can every <laughs> single person watching guess what my number one is i mean you it's did the wicker man it. the wicker man is the best soundtrack of all time it is not close like it's so good every single track on it is 100 percent a banger <laughs> Fucking, I have a hard time picking a favorite, but um, lately I've really been vibing with the first song, the kind of like really haunting like bagpipe song that plays as he's kind of like flying in the plane. I wish it was longer. It kind of cuts off like halfway into it and that makes me sad, but it's just such a mood setter and just like really sad and haunting and beautiful. Um there's a, a few like goofy jaunty songs on here that are a lot of fun. Um, Willow song is like so beautiful, like expression of sexuality. Um, the Maypole song, like holy shit, <laughs> so good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I listen to this soundtrack all the time, like just on its, it's own. Iconic. It's iconic. Yeah. It's a perfect 10 for me, like as an album. I think it's perfect. Um what was fun when we were doing this tattoo, the first session, he was like, is there anything you want to listen to today? And I was like, let's listen to the Wicker Man soundtrack. <laughs> so we listened to that while we were doing the tattoo. And then the, for the second session, he was like, you know how you said we should listen, we should listen to the Wicker Man soundtrack. I was like, yeah. He's like, that was a really good idea. <laughs> that was a vibe. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, on this imprint, released by the way there is just an astonishing featurette about the music where like this guy I, I probably should know his name or like what he is but like he does like a note by note <laughs> analysis of the music like on the piano and like talks you through how it's composed and what it's doing and the, it's like one of the best special features i've ever seen in anything so if you have it or you have access to it thank you paul check that out it's really good but yeah, that's my uh, number one. It's not close. I will assert that objectively as a fact. The Wicker Man is the best soundtrack of all time. <laughs> uh, I, before I read Terry's comment, I want to say I had somebody, I think it was a Facebook friend, that is uh, very young, and they're just now getting into some of the classics. And they mm -hmm. watched Wicker Man for the first time like seven months ago or something like that. And they were... They weren't like live tweeting to me or anything like that, but they were responding every so often. And I swear he was maybe five minutes into it. And he goes, is this just an, uh, I think he said either awkward or cringe musical. And I said, <laughs> yes, and please wait. And uh, he ended up really enjoying it, but I thought it was hilarious. It is one of those where like halfway through, and I know that like, everyone has made this observation at this point, but at the time I didn't know much about it. And I was, me and Avery were watching it and I was just like, at what point is this just a musical? Like yeah. there's a lot of music in this, you know? <laughs> um, but it isn't though, you know, it isn't a musical in that like kind of, we're going to break the rules of the universe and all break out in song kind of thing. Like there's just music happening all the time in the movie and it's really great, you know? Yeah. Uh, so uh, Johnny, it's another great song. Of course, Sorry. because I had to, <laughs> 
I had uh, I had one that I was considering putting as like a number five, but it was three titles, so I knew it was too much of a cheat, so I didn't want to do it. Um, but I actually have I'll, I'll go over five real quick honorable mentions. That cheat one, uh, and it's only because they're all the same. Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny, Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping, and Walk Hard are all three literally perfect. I think that they they shaped my love of musical comedy and musical comedies. Uh, saying it that way on purpose. Love all three of those. Um, another one, uh, Valley Girl. It is a perfect soundtrack. I think that it is perfect for the tone. It is perfect choices for everything going around there. Uh, I did, cite, did say Inside Lewin Davis earlier, but um, the other one that I was going to throw out, Baby Driver. Edgar Wright is incredible at soundtracks. He is he is up yeah, there. Scott like Pilgrim would be one of my honorable yes. mentions. Uh, com- comparatively to Quentin Tarantino for me, I know everybody thinks Quentin Tarantino is the best at it. I think Edgar Wright might have him beat overall. Uh, Last Night in Soho is an incredible modern soundtrack, um, but Baby Driver just takes it for me primarily because of how it's used in the film to literal perfection. Honorable mentions, you want to shout out? Anything? Um, I mean, I guess I did do the cheat with picking three for my number yeah. two, but you know, I, I'm going to be honest. I think of the Lord of the Rings as one thing and like maybe that's because the book is technically one book that was split up like kind of right. after the fact um but i've always just thought of it as one continuous unit <laughs> of, of course wonderfulness um there was one that i just thought of a sec- oh lost highway is one that i wanted mm. to say as an honorable mention although yeah. i didn't put it on here for two reasons one the soundtrack is actually i think maybe the thing that works for me the least when I'm watching it, like some of those Ramstein needle drops are so loud and obnoxious. And like, I get that that's part of the point, but it does kind of take me out of it a little bit. Um, and you know what? I was going to say just Marilyn Manson, but Ramstein too, in light of recent news, um, Marilyn Manson especially is just kind of completely ruined for me at this point. And it was kind of uncomfortable watching it in retrospect. Uh, but the I, soundtrack is really well done. I, I don't want to litigate it right now or anything. I thought most of the man uh, the Manson stuff was reversed. Oh, I no, I'll it, send you. A, I'll send you an article. It's it's like as bad as it could possibly be. It's like actually great. horrifying the stuff that he did. Um, uh, trust me, I take no pleasure in saying that Marilyn Manson was a very important person for me growing up. Um, yeah, and his music is really special for me. But um, it's like worse than you could even imagine. It's so bad. Um, yeah. I wish it wasn't true, but yeah. Hmm. Uh, so Terry had said two were mentioned from his Fire list. Yeah. Uh, he said, "Baby Driver, Baby Driver, The Harder They Come, High Fidelity, Incredible, Magnolia, Natural Born Killers, Once, One from the Heart, Swingers, Lost in Translation, and 20th Century Women." I still need to see 20th Century Women. I got to admit. Uh, Zombies Ate My Arm says The Devil's Rejects. That's a good one. That's a good choice. Gross Point Blank, The Crow, Empire Records of Batman Forever. Nice. We got some similar ones in there. Uh, Video Store is shouting out Alphabet City. Nice. Drive is a good one. Uh, Rocky Four, Amazing Soundtrack. Excuse me, Amazing Soundtrack. Like to mention Bob Roberts, Team America. Uh, Will is going hard for a mighty wind. Risky Business. That's a good one. This is a good question. How do you quantify films like Purple Rain that are wall-to-wall music but aren't really musicals? Um, I've not seen Purple Rain, so I don't know how the music interacts with that film specifically. But again, I wanted it to be as broad as possible. And like, it is so many of these things blur the line as to like what is a soundtrack versus a right. score versus a musical. And like, yeah, I mean, it just depends on how you categorize it in your own mind. Yeah, because like. I mean, technically, you could almost compare it to like Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is, yeah, I mean, very much like a, a jukebox musical, I think is one mm-hmm. of the terms used for it, mm-hmm. which I love it. I mean, that could have been a good answer tonight. Uh, Scorsese yeah. can drop a needle pretty darn well. Oh, definitely yeah. can. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Michael Smith, build halfway through the second book. Those genealogies of the tribes were so boring. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> the books are, are kind of rough. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm a person that will unashamedly say I think the films are better. And I know that that's like blasphemy to a lot of people. But uh, Sam says honorable mention to Ishtar. 
Uh, Firewalk with me. That's another Boogie one Nights. that I really, really thought about adding, but I think it was kind of my, it, it felt like a cheat where I really just wanted to put the soundtrack and specifically the score to Twin Peaks in it because it's just so, so good. But, you know. Yeah, Tony, uh, I can send you the link too. Yeah. Evan Rachel Wood's documentary about Manson is good but depressing. It's for anyone who's curious, it's the one that the Rolling Stone did. Um, uh, I can look it up right now, actually. Just tell people the name of it. Uh, wow. I'm I'm doing what Will said, and that was to look up the Orgasmo soundtrack, and it does look surprisingly good. <laughs> uh, Lost Boys, that's another good one. Uh, Pump Up the Volume, that's another one that should have been mentioned earlier. That's a great, great soundtrack. Uh, yes, Paul, I did say, oh, brother, where art thou? Uh, Cannibal the Musical, fun. Uh, Strictly Pop Compilation, my favorites are Lost Boys, The Craft, Running Scared, Beverly Hills Cop, and Top Gun, even though I hate that movie. <laughs> oh, <Tom laughs> nice, Man. dude. Uh, I love the Pootie Tang soundtrack, and that's not a I mean, yeah, how could that be a joke? It's a great soundtrack. Clueless, yeah, this is one that almost made my list earlier as well. Um, primarily because one. I will, and uh, I think we talked about this in the Discord last week, diehard fan of ska music die hard still am i will listen to scott every single day of my life and they have some good scott uh video store also have to say how much i love the work of adam curtis I'm not sure if you guys get much of his stuff in the u.s but his documentaries have amazing soundtracks what has he done video store i don't know that i recognize his name uh big lebowski is a good one too for sure uh, the name of the article is Marilyn Manson, the monster hiding in plain sight on Rolling Stone. It's very long and it's like Jesus. really like I'm going to put like every single trigger warning on it. But like it, it's difficult to read it, but um, it's extremely comprehend comprehensive, like really good journalism. Um, so, Damn. yeah. Well, Celeste, we covered some incredible soundtracks. Uh, we we covered some Daryl of the. Does have a good soundtrack? <laughs> so does Suburbia. Oh, uh, Repo Man too almost made my list. I should have mentioned Repo that. Man. It's Repo Man's one. incredible. Um, some of the biggest physical media announcements in in recent years. Anything else you want to cover or shout out? I know you've been sick, so probably not much to hype on the channel at the moment. Oh, um. No, nothing terribly much going on right now in terms of stuff that's out. I put out a Vinegar Syndrome review video kind of recently. Um, kind of a low-key one because it was just like three less amazing films that they put out. Um, yep. But I do want to go ahead and shout out my Patreon because there's some fun stuff happening over there. We have a more, you know, more active as more people come in, but it's been fun. The Discord community there has been has been good um and i've been committing to at least three patron exclusive videos a month those have been easier for me to commit to because i don't have to edit them and as when i was not working from home that was the part that took the longest by far yeah. was finding time to just like sit down and edit for six hours you know like it's just yeah. difficult but when i could just kind of bang out you know and just be like this is for the real ones and i don't have to worry about it being like super polished and perfect um Oh, nice. I hope you like it, Paul. Um, those have been fun videos, and I think people are liking them. And uh, yeah, I've been a little late on getting the postcards out because I got sick, but um, I have all the supplies for it, and they're going to be really cool. Like, I'm going to, like, they're they're all going to be unique, handcrafted. Um, like, <laughs> thanks, KV. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to sign them, and then I have, like, a, like, a, like a wax seal with like a sigil imprint that I'm going to do on the back and everything. Nice. It's going to be cool. So, you know, um, if that sounds I'm like sending something... out my first round and I didn't yeah. go anywhere near that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't not do something and not have it completely on brand, you know, right. I got to keep it, keep it consistent. So, well, the link for Celeste Patreon is in the description below already. Thank so you. please go check it out. Yeah. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, Anthony, come hang out. I'm honestly surprised you're not there already. <laughs> we need your uh, <laughs> we need your sense of humor over there. There's um, also a music channel over there that's pretty active. If you want to just spam hymn songs, and I will encourage that. 
<laughs> I do want to say thank you so much because I know that this was uh, not ideal timing, but I, I'm so grateful that you're here. Hey, you know what? This was like something I was really looking forward to. Like I was really hoping that I would be well in time to do this, especially after some of these announcements. And um, I'm glad that we got through it and I feel pretty okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope I hope it was enjoyable for the viewers. I'm sorry if my voice hasn't been as sultry as usual with all the congestion, but you know. <laughs> well, um, we are uh, scheduling out for October, and w the last few times you've been on, we have not talked about horror much. So maybe we need to go back to the to the roots and get you back in in October. Do something crazy. Hell yeah, I would love that. Let's do it. Thank you everybody for hanging out. Uh, come back next week. Uh, next week is. Uh, oh, it's not the first of the, the month next week yet. Oh, next week is a surprise guest. That's right. You're going to find out who that is next Thursday live. Uh, and there's a very big reason it will be a surprise, I promise. Um, anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out. And uh, as usual, we'll see you on the next one.